What's going on, guys? Welcome to our uh, Guilds of Ravnica set review. I'm here with Swole Mike and Thick Mike, otherwise known as Regular Mike and Rob. Mike Prime. Um, Mike Prime. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to go through all the cards in Guilds of Ravnica. I'm going to break this down into two videos. I'm going to break it down into white, blue, black, and red for one video. And then the next video is going to be green, all the gold cards, artifacts, and lands. So two separate videos if you guys are watching on YouTube. And uh, if you guys are not watching on YouTube, if you guys are watching on Twitch, then uh, we're not ending it after after the red. We're just ending the video. I have some beard oil the first time ever, and it's a little skull, and it has a golden liquid in it, and it's pretty manly scented, but it's not overpowering, so it's nice. What's your thoughts on the whole Jerry Thompson thing? Uh, I don't think it's a debacle. I think it's a, I think it's a great... Yeah, that's as that's, far from debacle as you can get. Um, but yeah, I, I support, I support it and I will be talking about it in a Frank thoughts or a YouTube video in the, in the next day or so, as soon as I can get around to recording that. Mm. All right. So the first card blade instructor it is a common for three mana. We're not going to, I'm not going to describe like the mana cost and everything. Cause it's on the screen for you guys. Three, one mentor. Whenever this creature attacks, put a one, one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. This reminds me of, uh, there's an elder scrolls legends mechanic called rally. Which is whenever a creature attacks, you put a plus one plus one counter on a random creature in your hand. So if a rally creature is attacking on board, one of the creatures in your hand randomly gets a plus one plus one counter. This feels a lot like that. Uh, only you can't do that in Magic, so this is like the next the next best thing. It also reminds me of Bolster a lot because it's a uh, yes. it's it's like a lower powered creature is getting the, the 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 counter. What do you think of this? But the thing that I don't like about Mentor is. It can not happen, right? If I read if I read the wording properly. This creature attacks, but one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. Uh, if there's like if you have two if you have three two three power creatures, I imagine no creature gets a counter. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's when all creatures are equal. It doesn't you don't they get, stay they don't mentor equal? And to be fair, so I, I do think uh, in a limited format this is a good card though. I, I don't think it's a bad attacker. I actually think just right off the bat, I think Boros is seems pretty strong to me in limited format at least. Um, yes, sure. Mike, any thoughts? You think this is a commander staple? Mike thoughts. No. Okay. Commander staple. That's, there's, he's not going to talk. There's every card, more. every card what? will have a conversation. What did he say? What did you say? I don't remember. Wow, it was literally not even. Wasn't important. It wasn't six seconds it wasn't, ago. Wasn't important. Wasn't important. Wasn't important. All right, bounty agent, two mana rare, two two, two two for two. All right, vigilance, tap it, sacrifice it, destroy a legendary permanent that's an artifact creature or enchantment. Discards gas. It's interesting because it can't kill planeswalkers, right? Like that's the obviously oh. the point. Like that's why you're specifying because that's the only the only permanent type you're leaving off here is planeswalker and land, right? So like, you can't kill a flagstones of trocare with this, or a planeswalker. So. Yeah, but that's still a busted on two, right? Like that card seems excellent. Is it busted? I mean, it's just a two-two for two. The with ability, right? I, I mean, the ability itself. The card as um, a whole is not overly broken. It's not like it's a three-power three-two for two with this upside. I mean, how many how many creatures? How many things are you killing with this in standard? Right, like Lyra, Search for Escanta. Sure. I don't know if I even care about that though. Right, Argos Bloodfast. I don't care about either of those. Those are the cards that win games, though, right? Like, when those hit the battlefield, the the amount of advantage they accrue is what really wins games. And the fact that you can board into a card that just destroys... Oh, uh, there's not going to be any more accruing because, because there's no vehicles. So you can't... Oh, okay. you can't the creatures you can't, can't accrue. accrue. They can't accrue. Any they can't accrue anymore. Oh. So, yeah, no more vehicles. The card's terrible. Agreed. Do you think this is a commander stable? Actually, probably, yeah. This would probably be pretty good. Yeah, you just get to kill their yeah. their commander. This card just taps to kill a commander. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's have true. you seen the the spoiler for the new card Assassin's Trophy? Is that any, is that card any good? Well, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I'm sure. <laughs> Candlelight Vigil, four mana enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus three, plus two, and has vigilance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's how I feel about that. I wouldn't even play that in limited, to be honest with you. I'm not going to play if it doesn't have life link or or a, a form of evasion. It's not worth it. I'm, right. That's v just the bottom line. Is muted a four point. mana enchantment is not where you want to be, even limited. So citywide bust, three mana. This reminds me of uh, only the strong survive or whatever that card is called. The one that destroys all creatures. Like un you choose four power and you destroy all other creatures. Oh yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I don't remember what's called. Um, citywide bust, three mana for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures with toughness four or greater. So you get rid of all the big butts. I don't think they could hear that. I don't think it went through. That's really sad. Anyway, 
We just sat here in awkward silence then? Yeah, well, they could hear They could probably hear it from the speakers, but okay. not from the thing. I don't know why that's sad. Anyway, this kills... Uh, I don't know. It kills Steel Leaf Champion. It kills Galta. Like, this is not bad. Like, if if your deck is only playing small guys... Yeah, this makes sense. Like Mentor the Meek style deck, maybe. And if you play this, like, it's just the same as killing their big guy. But you might be able to kill multiple big guys. Yeah. And considering it's all creatures with toughness four or greater, you don't actually have to choose. Interestingly enough, it dodges um, the five three hexproof horse. Oh, uh, sometimes it does. Mare. Sometimes they put they make that that a big boy. Anyway, I think this card's fine. Um, I think it's gonna. I don't, what's the what's that other card called? Like, it fits in a in a niche deck, is what it is. Is it strong? Does it have the word strong in it? Yeah, Slaughter the Strong. Three mana. Each player chooses any number of total creatures here, controls with total power four or less, then sacrifices all of the creatures here. I don't think controls. that's the card you're thinking of. This is the card I'm thinking of. There's a there's another card that literally says what you said, where it's you choose four or greater, or less than four. No, that's not what I was thinking of. Uh, I said all creatures power four. Yeah, let, this let is... me tell you what you're thinking of. Yeah, I was like, mm, no, I don't <laughs> think so, man. This is exactly what I was thinking of, because it has it references four, yeah. it's a sorcery, and it's three mana. This is exactly what I was talking I about. I honestly didn't even know that existed in standard. Okay, well then how did you know that wasn't what I was thinking? I didn't. I do. Collar the culprit. Look, it's funny because these two arts are like almost back to back. Oh yeah, look at that. That's interesting. It's uh, the same dude. Collar the culprit. Four mana. Destroy target creature with power toughness, with, with toughness four or greater. Uh, okay. I mean, I mean that's just a four mana limited card. Yeah, you're it's just gonna be playing bad. this. You'll play this in limited almost every time. Yeah. Probably as a one of. I don't know if how many you want of these because limited is not ex extremely dominated by uh, big butt, big butt gentlemen, but. We'll see. Big How many times did I say button that sentence? That's Three. the question. Three. Four mana for a Convoke Enchantment when uh, Conclave Tribunal enters the battlefield. Exile a non-land permanent and opponent controls until it leaves. This is just our cast out replacement, which is fine. This card's great. You get to Convoke it. This card's excellent. So if you play like uh, three three duders, you can uh, put it into play for... Yeah. For Oon. For Oon. Yeah, this card's just fine. We don't need to talk about Banishing Light or Oblivion Ring, so... Crush Contraband... That's, that's a very specific card. For what? What did you? What did you point him? No, point him because this is his card. Crush contraband. This is as big of a commander staple, a commander staple as it gets in the set. Choose one or both. Exile an artifact. Exile an enchantment for four mana. Yeah, it's not bad. There's things that are way better than it, but artifact and enchantment you get to exile both that card's busted in commander that's a great commander busted card. as a great busted as, makes me feel good. That's a great card in commander. Return to ducks. Is just Return to ducks. Uh, yeah, I think this card's fine. I don't know if it's going to be C plane in standard. No. Yeah, it's like too expensive. Nope. Usually, you don't need to kill both an artifact and an enchantment, and I would rather have a cheaper spell like Naturalize that does this, mm -hmm. or like even Forsake the Worldly was great because you could cycle it if you don't need it. Yeah, and exiling those things is relevant, so that's not not irrelevant on this card. But Dawn of Schmope, <laughs> two mana. Whenever you draw, whenever you gain life, you may pay two if you do draw a card. That's expensive. Uh, four mana, create a 1-1 one, one soldier with lifelink. This card does a lot, but unfortunately all the things it does are very expensive. Yeah, four mana to make you guys... Like, if I have ten mana, I, I think this card's fine, but I don't know how frequently I'm going to just have ten mana to throw into this. I think it's okay, but, like, gaining life in, in standard right now is not as easy as you think. Well, there's a lot of 1-1 one, one lifelink creatures, though. This, is, goes, this goes in the deck. All the new soldier tokens make have lifelink. Rav Oriar, love your content. I usually watch you on YouTube, but I get to see your stream today. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Also, I love that you've resubbed for nine months, even though you can you don't really catch the stream a lot. That's actually awesome, because it's uh, that's a significant amount of support for someone who doesn't actually get to see the stream a lot. This is a limited bomb. Oh, uh, this card's great in limited. Yeah, because um, it makes just makes dudes. Yeah, I mean? it gives you something to do with your mana every turn, yeah. and the creatures it makes also facilitate the life. Oh, game. that's true. Yeah, you're right. Um, so I mean, I think that's great. I think that if there is a deck in standard where it's like you know, um, well, Resplendent Angel is a thing, but great. Thank you so much for the for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Uh, what did you say is a thing? Resplendent Angel. That's true. Like, so if there is like a, some kind of life gain deck in standard, like it's an engine, right? It's an engine, right? Yeah. And like. The fact that this is when you gain life, you may pay two to draw a card. It's not nothing, right? It's, it's a little expensive. It's more expensive than, like, Mentor of the Meek, which is one mana. But if you don't have anything to do with that mana and you're just drawing extra cards every other turn or something, it's not bad. It's not too bad. Can we talk? go back real quick? Can we talk about the art, though? The art's very good. Yeah. It looks very Final Fantasy to me, doesn't it? it well, it's because it just looks like Sephiroth, right? Yes. Okay. 
<laughs> like it's got the gray you see gray hair and a sword like that's all i'm seeing is sephiroth uh one mana enchant creature enchanted creature can't block and it's activated abilities can't be activated this isn't terrible i love this card um it, it can still attack though don't forget yeah no i know that but i still love this it reminds me of a card that i used to love called you, you remember guard duty guard duty is the opposite though yeah yeah i know that but i'm just saying like it, this is a great... one mana ability to like to shut something down seems really this good. is what you want in like your boros deck where yes. you're trying to go super aggro you don't care about them attacking you just want to make sure they can't block like kind of like chain of rocks used to be Remember the card yes, Chain of Rocks? Yes. It's like but, that. Well, Chain of Rocks is more like a Journey to Nowhere type Yeah, because card, it exiles Where it just gets rid of yeah, the creature. I'm just, I'm just like, there's a there's an advantage to shutting off the, the blocking portion and not the attacking portion. Correct. If you just don't give a... a and the abilities, that's completely relevant. Right. Agreed. And it's yeah. one mana, yep. so... Chain to Rocks. Chain to... Uh, <laughs> chain to Rhinos. Divine Visitation. This is a weird mythic. Five mana. Uh, if one or more creature tokens... Creature tokens would be created under your control. Oh, I don't know why I said that actually. I thought it was I thought it was if one of our creature tokens would gain you life. All right. Mm. So, when you create your control, that that many 4/4 white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance are created instead. So, if you'd make 3 one ones, you make 3 4/4s four instead. It's a pretty decent upgrade. The, the ability is mana. huge. It's a great upgrade, but like it's 5 mana. What and, are you doing turns 1 2 3 and 4 that aren't making dudes in those kind of decks? Right. right. Like this this for this card to work, you're starting your to amass your tokens on turn six. Yeah, that's that's pretty late. And even so, at that point, if I'm making two four fours, but I have zero pressure on the battlefield, anyways, they can probably they're either already doing something to me that I'm probably not. Or they or either they just go to like secure the waste on turn six for yeah. five, and you go crush the contraband in response. Yeah, crush contraband at instant speed. So, you know, not great. I'm probably not going to see any play. Mike Prime looks bored. Can we get him a toy to play with? I. I feel like he does need like a fidget spinner or something sometimes. A fidget spinner. Here, squeeze this. <coughs> sure. Okay. It's just a sponge, man. Yeah. You don't have to be weird about it. Yeah. Can I absorb liquid with it? You can. I'm a sponge, Greg. Can you absorb liquid with me? Flight of Equinauts. Uh, eight mana for a four or five. It's an uncommon, so you can tell it's gonna be bad. <laughs> uh, flying and convoke. Eh, this is actually great and limited. I would play this. Yeah, this card's great and limited. Yeah, uh, yeah you tap three guys, you have a, a four or five flyer for five. Like, yeah. that's a great deal. Um, I don't know if you ever want to play it for eight. It's a pretty expensive flyer at eight mana, but nevertheless. But if you I have eight? I've eight mana before. What's it like? How many? That's like, that's, does that mean you have eight lands? That's a lot. I don't know. I don't know if I can handle all that. Mike's busy growing his facial hair. Don't disturb him. <laughs> well, aren't we all? Aren't we all? Gird, gird for battle. I think we're good. I think we're good with this card. Uh, one white, put a one-one counter on each of up to two target creatures. That's good. Um, to me, that's good. And if you're playing like a Boros Aggro deck, and you a think this is good? It's very good. Okay. It's very good, well, and it also messes with your mentor I, math too. I think we're good here. Our mentor math. Your mentor math. Yeah. Like we we're saying in in the example where you have the lowest the lower power creatures, you can adjust the counters on your creatures in order to trigger them to activate the mentor and allow you to get mentor the of the meek. No, isn't the ability called Mentor? Oh, the, the yeah, ability you can Mentor. Mess, you can mess with the ability of Mentor. So like oh. we were saying earlier, you can adjust the map in a limited format, yeah, sure. I'm talking. Like you can put a counter on the on the 3-1, so that way somebody is guaranteed to be lower. Exactly. I, I, yeah, that, no, this card's fine and limited. Yeah, yeah. Two 1-1 one, one counters for one man is great. Mm -hmm. um, I will. You probably won't see this in your constructed decks. No, absolutely not. Has the Marshall. Ha. One mana for a 1-1 one, one, whenever... It, and at least two other creatures attack. So it has Battalion. Battalion, yep. Uh, create a one white soldier. This card's great and limited. Yeah. Um, Seems good. I mean, you do has to have... You do has to have. You do has to have two other creatures, <laughs> but... The problem with this guy is that, like, if they have any creature, this guy just dies the first By the combat. time you're at three creatures, he's probably not They probably have anyways. one, yeah. right. They have one, yeah. Exactly. Like, in theory, like, the card on its face is great. Uh, what you have to make... What you has to make happen... Has to make happen uh, is a little bit trickier, so... This has the potential. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That was good. Healer's Hawk. Uh, okay. One mana, one one, flying lifelink. I, I mean, if we if we played Suntail Hawk in Dominaria Limited, I could see playing this, especially with a card like Has the Marshal, where you're like, well, I just need two other guys to attack, and this is a, like, it's almost a two power flyer for one because it's a two point life swing every hit. It's not great. But, I mean, there are aggressive decks in this format. And if you have cards like Gird for Battle, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you have a 2-2 lifelink flyer for one mana. And it's actually not that bad. 
I've actually seen this show up in a few uh, Boros aggro lists that some of the other people have posted. Yeah, Matthew Ori, a 2-1 flyer for one mana with lifelink uh, would not only be constructed playable, it would be an all-star. It would be a constructed all-star. Yeah. And it would be a 4 of in multiple archetypes. Yeah, Hunted Witness, insane. another one. This this set has a lot of one mana, one white spells. Uh, when it dies, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier token with lifelink. So Doom this Traveler. is just Doom Traveler of the set, yeah. Except instead of flying, we have lifelink now. We're making uh, soldiers with lifelink instead of spirits. I like it. Card's good. Inspiring Unicorn. 2-2 two, two for 4. When Inspiring Unicorn attacks, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. So this is a, this is a pretty pretty common card. We've seen the when this attacks, you yep. buff your team. Um, usually it's nice because the one in Amonkhet was a flyer, so that was uh, able to survive. Um... This is this is creatures you control. So on attacks, it is essentially a three three, which is nice because otherwise, oh, interesting, yeah, you're it, right. otherwise it might die. But it does make it uh, a little more, a little more tolerable. You can also, if this attacks with a mentor creature, you can also stack, stack it in such trigger, a way yeah. that this will get the counter. So it's a four four. Mm -hmm. So that's not the bad. A little, little tricky. Do a little tricky. Great mustache on hunted witness. Yeah. I do like this. Yeah, I do like the. It's a little uneven though, if you look at it. Oh yeah, I'm sure yours is the, the the peak evenness over here. I shouldn't have said anything. No, I'm gonna... now you now yeah now you're <laughs> now you're insecure about it. <laughs> All right, so intrusive pack beast five mana for a vigilant comeback. Stop being a little baby. Stop being a little Mitch. Uh, vigilance when intrusive pack beast under the battlefield. Tap up to two target creatures your opponent's control. Fine, limited card. I mean, this is gonna get you through. It's gonna let you attack more times than not. I don't play a lot of limited, so every time I've been looking at these cards, I think about when we're playing two at a giant. So here's the thing. When I started this, I was thinking I would be probably more of the guy who has limited opinions. You would be the guy that has constructed because you play way more modern and standard. Mm -hmm. And Mike is the commander guy. Also, if anything stands out for commander, like jumps out at you, just... Nothing just... has yet. I'll, I'll definitely pipe in when it does. Okay. You remember that four mana one instant? You remember that one? Do you remember that one? The exiles with the artifacts. That's a, that's a commander bomb, right? That's a, that's a Boom. That's busted in commander, right? So There's just better options. I was just kidding because I think Rob got way too overexcited about it. So I think it's great. Really Best it's white great. card is Venerated Loxon. We'll see. We'll. See. I don't actually know. So I looked through the set, but I haven't memorized any of the names or really memorized any of the cards yet. So a lot of this is kind of new to me as well, which is nice. Uh, four mana for a two four with Convoke. Whoop. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm probably. I'm probably ledeving this in the uh, garbage. Ledeving this in my limited decks. That's for sure. Light of the Legion, six mana. This is a five five rare. All right, flying mentor. Okay, I'm, I'm on board. When it dies, put a counter on each white creature you control. That's actually not bad. Just better stuff in standard already. <sighs> there is like you're never playing this over Lyra. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a problem. Like and Lyra comes down a turn sooner. That's my biggest issue. Like you could make this. You could push this. If this was five mana, would it be too good? No, I still don't think so. Would it see no. play? Maybe. I think right now it's guaranteed to see zero play. That last line of text is pretty much blank. Is it in like an aggressive deck though? Like if you if you go wide? It also lets you attack with this. It also... I don't like that there's a card like Settle the Wreckage in the format and this says when it dies, right? Yeah. Because I'd rather it say when it leaves the battlefield. Because they just settle the wreckage, right? Like you want... If you have this in play and you attack with it, you're probably you can probably just attack with this and have like three other guys in play, and then they're like, okay, cool, they have to deal with this, but they have to deal with it in such a way that you don't get the counters. Yeah, and Settle does that perfectly. So, Loxodon Restorer, six mana for a three four with Convoke. When it enters the battlefield, you gain four. This is fine. I mean, you'll you'll play it more times than not. You'll have one of these in your deck. Two might be a little overkill, but the four life is probably going to be relevant. You'll board this in when you have uh, aggressive matchups. It, it blocks well. Luminous Bonds. Uh, two of these in the same set is interesting. <laughs> Actually, there's almost three of these because there is the other one that you can enchant the guy with. Uh, can't attack or block. It's basically just three mana pacifism, right? Like, it's literally... Right. Yes, yes, Luminous Bonds is also already in standard. It's interesting, though, because it's literally just pacifism at three mana instead of two. So, it's funny to me because it seems like they've deemed that pacifism at two mana is just too strong. Hmm. So, let's just make it the default three mana. I, I don't know. I mean... I don't think it's too much to ask. Par Parhelion Patrol, four mana. For a 2-3 Flying Vigilant with Mentor. It's totally fine. Pretty good and limited. 
I mean, you play two twos for three. You play three twos for four. This has Vigilance and Mentor. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. The problem is it says lesser power, and this is only a 2-3, so it only hits a certain number of guys. If this is a 3-2, it would be a lot stronger because it could turn your 2-2s into 3-3s, three but right now it's only turning 1-1s one into 2-2s, two I imagine, or 1-2s into 2-3s, stuff like that. Yeah, Sealed Away for 2 mana at instant speed is okay. So sealed Away is great. Sealed Away is great because uh, it has restrictions. Like, you could only use it on tapped creatures. The, the reason it's instant speed is because it has to be, obviously, not because it's a some kind of perk of the card. Um... But, yeah, like, I mean, Seal Away, the problem is there's a restriction. You can only use it at certain times. So your opponent can force you into using it at awkward times, right? Like, hey, if you don't have any mana, I can attack freely. Or if I know you want to counter something and you only have two mana up, I will attack with this guy and force you to choose between Seal Away or a counter spell. Like, the difference is pacifism, you can just play whenever they have a creature out. You have a creature out, I'll just pacify it. Righteous Blow, this is also a reprint. One mana. Sandblast, deals I think. Two da- what? I think it's Sandblast. No, it's, righteous, it's literally Righteous Blow. Oh, is it really? Yeah. I'll just look up Blue, because I'm sure there's not that many cards. Uh, ch- ch- yeah, it was in uh, Avacyn Restored and Guilds of Ravnica. Okay, yeah, so it hasn't uh, been around oh, since. Oh, and Guilds of Ravnica. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That, that, that's <laughs> this one right here. <coughs> yeah, so two damage to an attacking or blocking creature. Uh, not great. Mm-hmm. What's Slash of Talons? That's it. It's, what did I say? Sandblast? Yeah. You were right. It's Slash of Talons. That's Slash of Talons deals two damage. Yeah, it's same the same, it's the same yeah. card. Okay, so it's just a functional reprint. So now we have Slash of Talons and Righteous Blow in Standard, which is pretty interesting. Bonkers. Rock Charger. Three mana when Rock attacks. Target attacking. Creature with flying. Gains flying. Yeah, this card's great. Pegasus Courser. Uh, the Dinosaur. Pterodon. Yeah. Yeah, this card's great. Yeah, this is actually literally Pegasus Courser as a 1-3. And it gets buffed by the other it's dude, weird. too. It's weird. There's so many reprints in this set. Like... Yeah. Skyline. See, like, the problem is, my biggest issue with Magic sets is that I think we've seen, what, maybe two constructed playable cards? Yeah. I couldn't even recite what they were. I think it's two. Maybe it was one. What are they? The 2-2 two, two for two that exiles a thing or destroys a thing. I think that's it so far. That's really weird, man. The only other thing that maybe would be if it had support was that Dawn of Hope thing, but like you said, it was just more of an injuring card than... Sandblast deals like four or five, though. Sandblast is a is, Yeah, Sandblast is a costs much five damage. Card. It's an instant, and I think it deals five damage. I, th- I think it's four, but... I think you're thinking of Breath of Fire. Oh, it does five. Yeah, you're right. Damage, yeah. Oh, yeah. but it costs three. Yeah, it's two more mana, and it deals five instead of two. Hmm. Skyline Scout, 2-1 two, for 2. Whenever it attacks, you may pay 2 if you do it against flying. Yeah, I figured that was exactly what it was going to be. Probably That should have been a 1-2. Like, you're probably just not... What, this? Yeah. The Scout? Because of because of the mentor, mentor? ability. Yeah. Sure. But th- at this point, you just don't need the counter, right? So isn't that better? Yeah, I guess. I mean, the point is you're never paying 2 mana to give a creature flying and constructed. No, of course not. Uh, Sunhome Stalwart. Not bad. Could potentially see some play. Two, two for two with first strike and mentor. Yeah, this card seems fine in standard. Um, Possible, right? That's it's on the lower level of inclusion. If the, if like there's it. a if there's a white or white X aggressive deck, I could see this this making the cut, especially because it just makes your one it makes your one one vampire tokens with lifelink into two twos, which yep. is great. First strike is extremely relevant. Um, the problem that I have with mentor is that it gives it to other attacking creatures, mm-hmm. so you just have to attack with your your one one to make it a two two. And sometimes you don't want to attack with your 2-2 because it's still too small, but, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, Convoke Cast Out. That was the other playable card in Standard. Oh, the, sure. The four sure, but out. that's just like a reap. It's not like a new card, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, tr- well, true, the effect, yeah. Sworn Companions. Three mana, create two one one soldier creature tokens. But there's like literally two of this effect already in Ixalan, which is interesting. Uh, one of them is for three mana, queens, something, and they make the lifelink guys. This is the exact same card, except they're white vampires with lifelink, right? Yeah. And then there's the Sapperling one. Well, I'm just talking about the white one. Like, yeah. Queen's Commission, three mana, create two 1-1 one, one vampire creatures with life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Literally it's the exact same card. Just vamps. Yeah, it's just soldiers instead of vampires, and they're both sorceries. So, another reprint. Like, it's just weird. Like, it just feels like... Take heart. One mana. Target creature gets plus two, plus two. You gain a life for each attacking creature you're controlling. It's your run-of-the-mill one mana. Mm-hmm. Tenth District Guard. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus oh, plus one until end of turn. That should have flash. Let's not bust it at flash. That's a good trick. I agree with you. That should have flash. I agree with you. I think, so, one of my my basic things uh, that I want to see done is, like, elevating cards like this 
from from only limited to play to maybe potentially constructed play. Mm -hmm. And I think adding things like that, like if you give this card flash, you're not making it broken and limited. Mm -hmm. And you're also, maybe it'll see constructed. It probably still wouldn't. But it gives it so much more nuance. It gives it so much more, like... It gives it a little more, a little more reach. It has a little more going for it. Like, but right now I'm just like, why, why am I? Gonna, why do I want to play this in my main phase and yeah, then attack with a creature with, a, with one higher toughness? It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Venerated Loxodon. This is the one Matthew already said was great. Yeah. Five mana for a four four. Josh, thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Almost one year. Good lord, what time to be alive? Four four with convoke, which is nice. When it enters the battlefield, put a one one counter on each creature that convoked it. That's actually very good. This card's extremely busted. In, in this card's great. So I would say there are three cards. I'm gonna actually write down the cards that we that we see as constructed playable here, just to get a good idea. Like when we finish things, uh, the two two cast out. And if we forgot anything, let us know. If we forgot anything that we were like, oh, this is a great constructible playable card, whatever. Uh, let me know so I can write it down. And that was the end of the white. So I think we saw three constructed playable cards, like as far as like obvious cards. Maybe some cards will be fringe or index or whatever, but um, it was the 2 2 with. Uh, does it have vigilance? Yes, 2 2 vigilance. That you can tap, tap to sack it. destroy or exile a, a destroy. legendary artifact creature or uh, enchantment. Uh, the cast out replacement that is, uh, you know, four mana with convoke. Or the Venerated Loxodon. Those are the only three cards that really stood out that I'm like, I will 100% see these in decks at some point in time. But um, otherwise, you know, probably not. Like, I can't... Nothing else is... I don't, I don't see any card that's guaranteed to... Um... No. Anyway. Anyway, now, now it's time for the blue, guys. Uh, capture Sphere. Four mana for a flash enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, tap enchant a creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. We've seen this a bunch of times. This is a very, very... Uh... I can't even name the other the other cards that this water knot. Uh, water knot similar. It doesn't have flash. It's, uh. Yeah, but um, there's one from New Phyrexia that does a very similar thing. I don't know. I, either way, you're not you're probably not constructing with this. Like, it's four mana. If it was like two or three, like it, cards like this have have traditionally seen play in standard when they cost one or two, and there are blue ones that are like negative six, negative zero to a creature. It's an enchantment. And that will actually see play because it gives blue decks a way to deal with creatures that they otherwise don't have. Yeah, you said something interesting when you just said if this costs, a, like you mentioned it costing two or three. Yeah. I'm sitting here thinking because I played that mono blue deck, and like you said, it's very hard to interact with creatures other than bouncing them and countering them. Right. A card like this that costs, honestly, even at three, it seems like if there was a mono blue deck, it'd be a card you could play before is obviously just way too much. But I was just sitting here thinking, like, if I had access to this at two mana... Like, like that dirty, just seems, yeah. It doesn't seem busted, right? Because you have a card like Seal Away, and again, I, I understand it has to be tapped. Right. It's not as efficient as something like Journey to Nowhere. Correct. But for a blue deck, it does most of what you want it to do, which Correct. is neutralize the creature. And and in the decks, and in, in your control decks, right, your blue decks, there's just better options. Your splash color is, always has better options than even this ability at two mana. And, like, the thing is, yeah, like, Sensory Deprivation was a was a card that, mm -hmm. that was played in some mono blue decks, because for one mana at instant speed... Giving a creature negative three, negative O oh, pretty much neutralizes a lot of creatures. Right. So this is not an ability that doesn't ever see play. Mm -hmm. It's just four mana is too expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll play it in limited. This will be blue removal for you in limited, but I mean, not in constructed, that's for sure. Four mana, draw two cards, jump start. This is actually fine. I like this card a lot. You discard um, a card and you can cast it from your hand. It's like flashback, but it's like flashback and retrace combined. Right, it's you pay the mana cost and discard it, or, or you're playing it again, you're flashing it back, so to speak, but you also have to discard a card, so it's like a worse flashback. This card's excellent. I think this card's great. I don't think it's better than okay. Or, I mean, I think it's better than okay. Like, this is your now your four minute. This replaces... Hieroglyphic Illumination. Yeah. Yeah. And Glimmer. Yeah, so because we just lost Hieroglyphic Illumination and we lost uh, Glimmer. Glimmer of Genius, so... Yeah, this card's great. Like, um, Yeah, late in the game, discarding a land to just literally have another Chemistry's yeah, Insight so hand good. is pretty good. Is this a commander staple, you think? Where am I hitting? Not you? No, All right. Not Just wasn't sure. <laughs> City Watch Sphinx. Six mana for a 5 4 flying. When it enters the battlefield, when it dies, oh, that's the worst. Surveil 2. Um, I mean, I'll play this 100% of the time. This is like Horizon, Horizon Scholar, which is a 4 4 flyer for six. And it said when it enters the battlefield, scry 2. This is a 5 4 instead of a 4 4. And then when it dies, you surveil 2. So. 
very similar. I mean, this is a this is a good card to have in limited, obviously. Give me five four flyer for six. Pretty good. I agree, a hundred percent. The thing is, like, when it when it enters the battlefield, it's almost like it's a win more because you got a great creature out of it, but you're also like making sure you can keep your momentum up. When it happens, when it dies, it's almost actually a more fair, balanced ability because you've just lost your best creature, so you want to actually find a way to recover or yeah. to to figure out what you may need next. Uh, let me ask a simple question. Why is there no Flicker Wisp Restoration? You don't have a card in the set. There's no busted Thrag Test to balance. Um, because there wasn't... Because there was one in Amonkhet, uh, or Hour of Devastation, or whatever the set was. Oh, uh, Kaladesh, Aether Revolt, whatever it was. And they actually didn't know that it was a combo with Sahili. So my only my only thought for that is that they're a little more careful with when they print those because sometimes they don't really realize there's an infinite combo that they didn't know about. Plus, it's not a super common ability. It's actually a pretty complex ability to blink something. It's not like... Um, it's not like a beginner level ability. It's it's a, it's a complex interaction sometimes, so you you kind of want to don't you just want to throw those in every set that you have. Dazzling lights, one blue mana target creature gains. No, well, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> speak of the devil. Another so it's basically another reprint. Only instead of flash, it has surveil too. Target creature gets an egg. Oh, it's still an end of turn. This is not an enchantment. Never mind. I don't care about this. I guess it doesn't need flash. This is a stinker. I don't think it's that bad. It's pretty rough. You never in, in blue. It's not that bad. You it this allows you to. This is a terrible blue fog that lets you to surveil too. If this said if this said prevent all combat damage, surveil too. Right? I don't. If this I don't look at card. it as a fog. I look at it as a removal spell. It's not. It's instant. It's not an enchantment. Yeah. It goes to the graveyard. It, it allow, but but this is a way in blue to alter the battlefield in order to kill a creature. You know what I'm saying? Like profitable. This this ruins a profitable attack for an opponent. So if you if you have something that maybe you don't want to trade, and on the back end of that, the fact that you get to surveil too, like that seems extremely relevant. I don't know if my if my opponent plays this against me, I'm pretty usually pretty happy. Yeah, I don't know it, if you can afford a deck. It's it's set dependent. I mean, you're talking about like the situation has to be like my power my, situation dependent. My toughness is exactly your power, right? If you have a three three and I have a three three, you can give my my three three negative three and then block profitably. You're already attacking into. But if I have a three anyways. four and you have a three three, like your your board has has to already be better than mine because mm -hmm. if my guy's a 3-4 and yours is a 3-3 this isn't going to do anything it's going to prevent 3 damage mm -hmm. that's a good point too there there are a lot of surveil matters cards too so in a limit oh yeah sure yeah. sure sure yeah. yeah i'm not saying it's i'm not saying your deck might not be relevant for this i'm just saying like as on its face it's situational like, like you said like there's cards like this all the time like there's a card that's like in m19 maybe uh, i'm not sure if that was the exact set or not but there's a card that's like hydro blast or something give not hydro blast hydro something hydro surge hydro surge yeah give all creatures neg two neg give all opponent creatures neg two neg zero draw a card, I think. and draw a card and mm -hmm. that card saw like no play mm -hmm. so i mean like you can see this kind of effect by itself is just not uh, you don't want to expend a slot in your deck for a card like this unless you have a lot of synergies with it devious cover up four mana counter target spell if that spell is countered this way exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard you may shuffle up to four target cards from your graveyard into your library. Why not counter target spell? If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into the owner's graveyard. Why not just say exile target spell? What's the difference? I guess so it can like be relevant to uh, spells can't be countered. Right. Well, yeah. Right. 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 So like you can. So like if they cavern of souls, you still can't devious cover up it. That seems really narrow though, and I don't think that's any of that's relevant. Oh, but see, that's actually that would make this even better because then you have an answer to something like Carnage Tyrant. Oh. You know what I mean? That, yeah. That's... But, like, this is a common four mana spell, so, like, you're not going to play it that frequently, but having the ability to put, like, one devious cover-up in your sideboard for a thing like Carnage Tyrant... Yeah, like like back when the when Spirits were in Standard, you had access to Exile All Spells and Abilities on the stack. Yeah. Summer Dismissal. Like, this like that. seems almost better. Yep. And it's not like you're trying to avoid the complexity of a, of a, of a mechanic like Exiling it. Actually... Because it's got common. That's very relevant. Because, because you're it's you're already doing it. You're still Exiling the spell. Yeah, so and you have Nezahal. Right. You have uh, one of the uh, the Flash uh, Dragons, right? One of the Flash... The Chromiums can't be countered, right? Yes. And, and there's another one in the set, I think, too. Which is funny, because, like, I mean, those cards are not so heavily played. Right. Exile spells too good at format? I don't think so at all. Exile spells no. are extremely common at format. Yeah, you have that's... Mind Break Trap. You have uh, Insidious... What's it called? Insidious Dreams or Insidious Will. Insidious Will. 
Insidious Will, which is four mana, choose one counter a spell. You may choose new targets, oh, copy targets. Nice. Uh, that's not it. There's there's a bunch of them though. Like there's a bunch of four mana spells that exile things. There's like, several three mana ones too, and they're never overpowered. It's never like wow, this is broken. Like it's just not. It's not a super common. Anyway, I think this card's. I mean, it's not, it's not gonna see play in standard. And, or yeah, the I, back half of it's completely. I mean, uh, I, or, I, or, or, or spells have to be real good to make it to see. Yeah, the the, the, the ability is mute. That that means nothing. That's blank text. No, I mean you said you wish you had draw two for less than four. No, I didn't. Did I say that? No, I mean you said you had. Someone in chat was saying earlier when we were talking about that um, flashback spell that he wishes that we could have three mana draw spells instead of four in standard because we keep getting the four mana ones. Maybe they're talking back and forth. I think that's fine. I think that's the standard for a, that's been the standard for a while now. I don't think that's actually a problem. Um, you still have three mana spells in standard. You have read the bones. You just had painful truths. Yeah, you right. have uh, divination. There's plenty of three mana spells. You're not going to get a three mana draw spell at instant speed. That's just not how they work. No. Um, I think pros are underrating surveil two and four. I don't think so at all. I think that I think they're rating it as high as scry, which is just fine. If you don't have a deck that takes advantage of cards in the graveyard, then it's just no better than scry. I've everything I've read from any articles have literally said that the surveil's be, just a better scry. Mm-hmm. Everything I've read has said that. Right, because the cards are much more relevant in your graveyard. You yes. can do more things from the graveyard than you could from the bottom of your library. Correct. When Demir Informant enters the battlefield, Surveil surve- 2. All right, so 1-4 for 3. This reminds me of, like, uh, Sailor of the me- Sailor, Sailor of Memes. memes. Yeah. yeah. Disdainful Troke. This is actually one of my favorite counter spells ever. Yes. Two mana for counter target spell with Commander of Hand costs 4 or greater. It's just a hard counter for so many things. Like Carnage Tyrant. You can get rid of Thruns. Um, you can get rid of... If they if they activate their Besage, you can counter those things. Um, I don't think that's the thing. None of those? You don't no. think any of those work? Mm-mm. All right, well. No, but you do know that if you have Savannah, you can regenerate a throne. If you copy their, if you copy their, their throne Mage. with your Phantasmal Mage, yep. you can actually search for the, the Savannah that your friend Correct. took with your Flooded with your flooded Strand and then <laughs> regenerate it. <laughs> yeah. So next level. Is this being recorded? Yes, it is. It will be going on YouTube. You can't count as Carnage. Yeah, you can't count on any of the things I mentioned. Those are all jokes. Those are what's known as memes. And uh, we'll be we'll be dishing out a bunch of them here today. So <laughs> better get your buckle in, guys. Buckle in. Uh, this... <laughs> nope, still can't do that. One of them. Which one? The, the, the promised end. The promised end. Yeah. Who's I'm... playing that in standard? No. I play in standard. It... He, he cheats. Yeah. I cheat. Not only is the set it's from not legal, but it was also not legal in standard. So. Right. That's why I said it cheats. What do you mean it wasn't legal in standard? Uh, it was banned. Yeah, it was banned. Instantly. No. It was instantly banned. Yes, instant banned. It was like memory jar. Same thing. Oh really? No. I thought it was the yeah, I'm like, no, it wasn't ball. because what should we call it? Play the Turbo List, Michael Majors. Yes, it was banned because it was very good. Like, no, it was not instant banned. That's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, sorry, new to the channel. Can you explain what a meme mem mem is? No, I. You'll have to figure this out on your own. It's crazy you spelled it. Subscriber slash mod slash large Brandon. Um. Yeah, disdainful strokes great. It's one of my favorite counter spells. It's, um, it kind of toes the line between like having like oh I don't I, I might need a uh, an essence scatter oh I might need a negate. I'm not sure. The card's so perfectly balanced. It's perfectly balanced because like, if it's a if it's a big threat that costs more than four an Ugin a Scarab God a consecrated Sphinx. Oh God, I hope not. Um, you can just counter it. It's great. I really like the new art of this card. So yeah, the new art's good. Yep. So, so you can you can focus more of your the cards in your deck on smaller threats, um, like you know like fatal pushes. If you if if that was legal, like obviously it's not going to be legal, but like cards that deal with smaller threats, and then you can save things like disdainful stroke for the bigger things that are harder to take care of and not have to worry about whether you need a spell or a non a creature. Dream eater, <laughs> I'm leaving. All right. Text. Let's go over this card. This is a, this is a texty boy. Six mana for a 4-3 flyer with flash. All right, not bad. I'm on board. I'm on board. When it enters the battlefield, surveil four. That's a good That's a good amount. When you do, you may return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. What do you think about this card? I don't think it's that good. Really? In, in a constructed it's sense? Six yes. Flash. Six is way too much for a 4-3, even at flash. We have a four mana 4-3 that, that taps two permanents that never saw play. I have a couple of these in a deck list I just posted on my Patreon page. If you guys are not there, you should check it out. It is my most recent post. It is, has a Sultai deck in it with uh, some Guilds of Ravnica cards. Mm-hmm. So I do have a couple Dream Eaters in there. Hmm. Here's the thing. It's a lot of mana. Very. But you're getting a lot out of it. 
Are you though? How much would you pay for Surveil Four? How much would you pay for a card that says Scry Four? How much would you pay for a card that says Scry Four? Return a permanent in opponent controls to to their hand. At instant speed. At instant speed. Three mana seems. Okay, so Balanced. if you're playing it for three, mm-hmm. what you're saying is you're getting a four three flyer with flash for three mana here. I understand the way you're breaking it down, but at but at the end of the day, when I'm playing a game of magic, I need six lands in order to cast this four three flash. But a lot of times in games of magic, you get six lands, right? No, no, no I'm not saying you won't get there. That's not my point. I don't think I'd ever want to commit six mana for four three flash that's gonna let me set up a draw next turn. But maybe the turn after that too. Like four cards deep is a lot. You know? No, I agree. Seeing four is a lot, right? Ancient Stirrings is huge at, at five, one off. So I get that, but I don't know. I think it's just way too expensive for a four three. It's a three butt. It's way too expensive. So what you're saying oh, is. A four four. That'd be much better. Or this looks like it should be a three five to me. Well, I think that's just. I think it feels like a three five because Sphinxes traditionally have. Well, that's true. A, a little more lo- lower power, higher toughness, or even three five. There's several three five Sphinxes. Yep. Um, so what you're saying is you'd be disappointing as well if you had a three butt. Correct. Okay, well that's fair. I don't even have flash. I appreciate your impartialness there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that too, the fact that it's a mythic. Teams in, the, in the format are going to be able to kill it. Frank, you of all people shouldn't be making the argument that you get to six mana a lot of the time. <laughs> How many things in the Dang. format can kill it? Too soon. Yeah, like, too soon. A lot of three damage spells currently. Lightning strike. Yeah, that's true. Uh, cast I mean, down. Um. Silhouette, every, everything hits it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Literally everything hits it, except for, like, a shock. I mean, seal away, no. You can end of turn this guy, untap, and you have a man... You have response... Like, the problem is you're, paying bl- you're playing blue, and you have six mana. You play this at the end of their turn, and that gives them one window to have a response. If they don't have a, a lightning strike in their hand, or if they don't have mana to use it, if they don't have a cast out, or, uh, you know, whatever the, the enchantment is, I, they don't have an instant one. If they don't have, uh, they can't seal away it immediately. Like you get to untap and and have a counter spell or a disdainful stroke. This is a great card for control deck. Like a four three is great, especially when you can kind of mitigate the cards they have in their hand throughout the rest of the game. I I, I don't know. I think you guys are underrating this. I think this is a card you're definitely see some see some play. I think it's it's expensive, but it does, uh, it does a lot. It all comes down to if control decks are three three. Um, Three color versus three 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 three. If they're shard color or if they're two man, if they're two mana control decks, because if you're playing shard decks, then Chromium's just better. So here's the thing. This is why I don't think they're going to be shard decks just yet, um, because there's no Azorius, uh, and there's no Orzov in the first in in Guilds of Ravnica. There's only Demir. So uh, I don't think you're going to have blue white. I looked at the blue white deck. It just it loses a lot, but it doesn't gain enough. Uh, the Demir deck is probably going to be fine because you have a lot of new tools for it. Mm-hmm. And again, with, same thing with Orzov. You just have no incentive to add white cards to the deck. Like you're losing a lot of lands, but you're not getting Godless Shrine. Like yet. you're not getting uh, Hollowed Fountain yet. So you just don't have the the replacement cards for those. And um, you know, alternatively, like I like I did mention in the Patreon post, like Sultai is an option because you do get uh, Golgari and Demir so far. Yeah. So yeah, I think the value on this is great. I think this is a good card. I think we can complain about it being a four three, but I think as a four four, it's actually much. Much, much stronger for the things that it's doing. It's doing a lot. I don't think this is anywhere near as good as Gear Hulk. I, that is not what I said. No, I'm reading. I'm answering ah, your question. I was like, that's yeah. don't do it. Don't put those, don't, don't put those <laughs> words in my mouth. They said, it, does it just replace the Gear Hulk? But yes, it could because there's no other replacement for that. Replacing Gear Hulk does not mean it's as good or better than a Gear Hulk. It just means that you need a six drop and this could very well fill that role. Um, is this a commander staple? I mean, I can see it. Milling four was pretty good sometimes. I can see it. I can see it seeing some play. Hmm. If I have a Sphinx control, if I have a Sphinx tribal deck, is it a commander staple? If you have a Sphinx tribal deck, probably yes. What about a nightmare what tribal if I deck? Have... <laughs> That's where I was going to go next. <laughs> what about my nightmare tribal deck, Michael? Well, if you can name a blue and black nightmare. Uh, Ashok, he's a nightmare weaver. Yeah. Oh, he can be. Can he can be used as a? Can't they not? Didn't they make it to where? You I'm going to go on to the next card. Drown secrets, two mana. And this this card definitely deserved a lot of a lot of input. I think this is definitely a card that was worth talking about. Also, I apologize if the volume was too low. I realized that the settings for this for this scene in in OBS, uh, I hadn't adjusted the default mic volume, so I lowered it now. I noticed it might have been clipping a little bit, so I hope that was not the case. And you guys, you uh, can turn your mic volume back up. I'll never turn that mic volume back. I'll. 
See, this is what happens when you turn it up. <laughs> you, you give them that freedom, and it's all out of it's all. Whenever you cast a blue spell, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Why is this a rare? Another one of these things, huh? I love the card, though. You love it? I I don't think it's playable, but it at two mana. I like, think I think Mike is super quiet because that's his default mode. He's not thrilled with this set so far. Mike actually hasn't said one word since we started this. Oh, we forget to. What was the other? Like, we had the draw two card and we had the dream eater. What, any other playables? I don't think in blue there were. In chat, let us know if we said this card is definitely going to see play and constructed. Let us know if there were any other cards that we said that about. I think it's only the draw two with jumpstart and the dream why eater. Why do you never push these kind of cards? Like, why is it only two cards? Like, you could think it could be three. I think it could be like five. You think you could build five what? cards with every blue That's spell you insane. cast? I would untap with this and go opt, opt, opt. And then you're literally like losing just 15 over a third cards. of your library like at that point. Five cards is a lot. Holy crap. That's I do insane. think two then is... It would, then it would push it to be something that would be actually played. Three is boring. Okay, hold on. What if I play one of these... On turn two, on turn three, I play another one, million exactly, for five. Exactly, that's it. And yeah. I play opt and million for that's ten. That's why I said I like it at two mana, because th this is the ability where you stack it, and then it's actually relevant. But obviously, it's 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 not playable. But like you said, in that example, if you play, if it stacks with multiples, that's insane. Mike, blink twice if we need to send the police. <laughs> Cap1945, thank you so much for resubbing. Really appreciate it, buddy. All right, so... Three cards yeah, is balanced. This card is as playable as Frank's. Oh, cards. No. I think you're underestimating like how big, how how cards like this. Well, so here's the thing: you're setting a precedent. You're saying these specific cards can be pushed, and you can put them to four. Yeah, what do you mean by these? The cards? problem, the problem with that, is that now in in, for, in the format you have other cards like fraying sanity, mm -hmm. which is also probably pushed, and so like then you just have like this uh, this critical mass of really pushed mill cards, and then mill is just a ridiculously powerful deck at that point, and. I think every opponent who's ever played against a mill deck, that's who. Oh. I don't know. This card's fine. I, I like that these exist. I like I like Mike said, I think they are a little underpowered. I don't think they're I don't think they're at the point they need to be. But Drelax, thank you so much for the re sub. Three months in a row, triple Mike set review. What a treat. That's what I say. Um pernicious dude, can you elaborate on what you're saying? How how it's relevant to the I'm assuming you mean Nexus of Fate? And then also Frank loves Gutshot. It does not synergize because it says cast. No, you set your library up with Nexus because like you can, you can make it so that you only have Nexus of Fate in your deck, right? Like even if you put it in the graveyard, it still gets shuffled back in. So every card that goes to your graveyard is going to stay there except for the Nexus of Fate. Okay. So you get to a point where your deck is very very thin. Sure. And, and you just have four it. Nexus of Fates that just keep going back in the deck. The, and it doesn't. Um, Giga Drows puts copies of the spell. It doesn't cast it, so that doesn't work. Like my dad. He yeah, copy. Enhanced, yeah, Giga Dross doesn't put it, put it puts copies straight into the stack. It doesn't actually, you're not actually casting those. Um, finally, a magic stream that's not 30 minutes of filler. Well, I hope I'm glad you think so. That's not to say that, like, well, joke's on you. It's 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 definitely not, I hope. Uh, enhanced surveillance, two mana. You may look at an additional two cards each time you surveil. That card's awesome, I think. Really, I do, I do. Enhanced surveillance, shuffle your graveyard and your live into your library. Um, I, I don't think so at all. Um, I think Scry is strong enough, and I'm, I'm saying Scry because I'm comparing it to Scry. Mm -hmm. I think Scry is strong enough on its own. If there was a card that's every time you Scry, look at two extra cards. That's that's the that's the um, the epitome of win more to me, right? Like you have a card that says like it does nothing on its own. Like if you don't have any surveil cards after this, it it's literally just dead. And like the only thing it does is make your already good effects just better. Right. So. The way I look at it is not in the manner of finding the card I want on the top of my library, but filling my graveyard four cards at a time instead of two. That's that that actively contributes to the game plan. So I don't think this is good in a spell deck where I'm trying to ponder, right, to set everything up. Right. But if I'm actively trying to utilize my graveyard, which this set has pushed a lot, like I guess I can Are you talking about constructed or limited? Constructed. Okay. Not in limited. Not at all. No. This is this is too dirtle in limited. So in constructed, the way I kind of look at it is think about how explosive Stitcher Supplier has gotten in, in old formats, right? Because on turn one, you you can your velocity is three cards immediately. Right, but Stitcher Supplier does something by itself. Like if you have this card, and you don't have the requisite Stitcher Supplier for this card. You're just like, oh, well, I wish I drew that card instead. I mean, in a dedicated deck. Would you ever want this over just a different surveil card? I, I don't know. 
I mean, okay. like, I feel like there's if there was a card that says like draw, like the like the blue black card that says draw two cards. I want this with two. that though. But you're having to replace something in your deck with this. Like this takes up a spot in your deck. So like you're ultimately you are taking up a spot that could potentially be a different surveil card, which probably does more on its own. It could be. I don't know. That's just my, my, my that's my take on no, it. No, I, I agree with your and, take. I think it's more of a test. That's something you have to test. And right? don't get me wrong. Like I I want I like that perspective. I want you to. Yeah, I like that you came up with the, uh, you know, the defense and and why you know where it could fit. Dream Eater would will, surveil will six. Boom. We should made it better. After watching guilds we played at the pre-release, this goes great with undergrowth. Yeah. Probably. But I mean, like, how many how many creatures do you really want to put in your graveyard when you're playing limited? That's my question. I don't know. Like, usually you have, like, 15 cards in your deck, right? So, like, if I'm just throwing creatures in the trash can to make one creature in my hand better, I don't know. I don't know. That card tiptoes a fine line, right? It's not a four of. Three also seems like too many. It's, it's like... Are talking about limited? In any format. Well, because it's uncommon. So you're, you're unlikely going to have more than two in your deck. Well, I'm saying, limited. the power level of the card and the way the card interacts, it's like, I just want one. Because one should be enough. Right. Once you hit the second one, whether it's, you're in limited or it's not... A, it's, it's a little... The diminishing returns are, yeah, are high. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, I got you. Um. So, Guild Summit, three mana. Uh, enters the battlefield. You may tap any number of untapped gates you control. Draw a card for each gate tapped this way. Uh, when a gate enters the battlefield in your control, draw a card. I saw this card, and it actually instantly made me think of you. Because you like to play obscurities and in, 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 in I do, but I don't want to work this hard for it. You know what I mean? It really isn't that bad of an effect if you have a. So if you're using explosive vegetation from the set to draw you two cards the turn after you get this explosive vegetation in any land, or are you just saying the equivalent of the? No, there's an, there in, there's in green. There's an explosive vegetation that fetches guild gates. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. So you play this on turn three, and the next turn you draw two. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, if that deck is a thing, sure, but like. Typically, your your constructed decks don't want to be playing guild gates. They want to be playing like the stronger. Again, I, I didn't think of you. Or I didn't think of it and go, "Oh, this card seems sure. like it, it could be played constructive, right?" I just think I could see someone saying, "I really want you to build this guild gate deck," and you would look at it and go, "All right, I'll give it a try because that seems kind of cool." Yeah. It oh, I would definitely off. do that. I would definitely try that. Yeah. Hundred um, percent. That being the case, it is that would be like a critique deck, and I, I wouldn't be right. playing it in like right. you know a grand. You're not or brewing this right now. <laughs> But I could see doing it, you mm-hmm. know. But I, I am acknowledging that it would be a brew ahead of time. You know, I'm not saying that, like... And, and, and when it comes to a constructed, like, a set review, like, we're acknowledging that it's not a constructed all-star. Yeah, correct. It's a cool card. Very. Leapfrog, three mana, three one. It has flying as long as you've cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn. Reminds me of Relic Runner. That's fine. I mean... Three mana is pretty intensive for a three one that you have to activate it. Yeah, but I mean, flying is flying. Mm-hmm. This is clearly in preparation for Mazes End standard next set. Maybe I could see them reprinting Mazes End. I mean, I could, I could, I can't, I can't, I couldn't imagine them not doing it actually with Guild Gates, right? Yeah. But maybe they're just trying to make Guild Gates a thing in like Commander or something. I don't know. Maximize altitude. One mana. Target creature gets plus one plus one against flying until the turn. You can jumpstart it. This is actually not that bad. Mm-mm. This is a card that I can even see like a card. This is a card that I can even see like infect playing maybe you know i don't think they'll play it over distortion strike but being able to use it twice yeah. whenever you want is nice yeah. so like distortion strike you play it once if they kill your guy and you have another guy out then you don't get the second use but like this is almost the same you pay one blue and then it just sits in your graveyard and you get it again if you want to at some point like it's really not bad yeah jump is very cool on this like this takes a card like um if you have like uh 16 creature seven spell deck it almost makes it feel like you now have an eighth spell for the little inclusion of the one yeah. card, which is so cool. yeah. Like any of your lands is just basically turns into a maximized yeah. altitude. It's pretty cool. Mission briefing: blue, blue, surveil two, then choose an instant or sorcery from your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. If that card we put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. This is just Snapcaster Mage that lets you cast sorceries at instant speed if you want to. And pay alternate costs. And pay alternate costs. Um, but you still have to pay the cost, right? So mm-hmm. it's a little interesting. Um, I, I was really high on this card because I didn't think you had to pay the cost. Like, kind of like a Windbrisk Kites or a uh, Shelldock Isle. Oh, that would make this much better. 
I agree. I thought that I was going to be able to play Cruel Ultimate. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was like, this card's insane. Yeah. I want to play Cruel Ultimate for two mana in Modern. If that did that, I would say it's better than Assassin's Trophy. I would say it's better than Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hmm. Like you just play Cryptic Command once and then like every then you're, every mission whoop, briefing is whoop, a two mana Cryptic two mana, Command. Two mana. That's, that would be busted. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, that That is true. Like the spell you cast isn't targeted. So if you... Like if they have like a Relic of Progenitus... Uh, not a Relic of Progenitus, but like a specific card that exiles a specific card in your graveyard, right? Uh, they can't actually choose what you're using because Correct. if they go to target something, you can just choose something else on resolution, so. Yep. Exactly, yep. It's the same as Godfarer's Gift. Uh, it does let you pay alternate, but timing restrictions still apply, really? It says you may cast that card this turn. No, it does not. Timing restrictions Yeah, it, does, it, it says this turn specifically. And this does not let you cast Ancestral. Because you can't pay the cost. Yes, uh, no one of on one the of the one of the restrictions for resolving this card is that or resolving the card you're playing is paying the cost. So, um, yeah, saying you saying specifically saying you may cast this that card this turn uh, should get around timing restrictions. It does. So at least everything I've read. Yeah, that's that's that seems very specific that they that they wrote that way. I think this card is actually fine. Um, it it lets you play like a scape shift. At the end of their turn or something, maybe if like if that's if that's true. Um, I don't know. I don't know. The card could go either way. I think it just depends on what the formats look like. It could be a modern card because unlike um, unlike Snapcaster, you can do it at instant speed. I don't know. I love this card. Murmuring Mystic. Don't forget to type it down. Uh, mission briefing on do, your list. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, definitely think it'll see some play. Oh, 100 percent. It'll definitely be tested in uh, across other formats. I mean, in standard, right? It's just a it's just a snapcaster of the body in standard, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, snapcaster is extremely powerful, so maybe that's good enough. It's definitely a card like worthy of sideboarding in in a control mirror, just as a two mana way to hit something you've already cast, like a, a four mana negate. You know what I mean? That, that seems relevant. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a one one blue bird illusion creature token with flying one five for four. You like this card? I like this card a lot. It's like a 100%. bad Talrand, isn't it? Yeah, it is a bad Talrand, but Talrand in standard would be busted. Talrand was never busted in standard. I think Talrand in the in the format that they've created. Really? Yeah, because they've leaned so heavily. But Talrand was in a format with like preordains and ponders. What I'm saying, this whole set, like part of this set, is is it? There's so many red, blue, red spells that they've thrown into this deck or into the set that it seems extremely relevant. The fact that it's a five butt is huge. You're making evasive flyers. Like there's there's a lot of good to this card. I don't think this is a four of. You know what I mean? I just I think its ability is good. I like it. Interesting. I like it a lot. Damn boy, he's thick, boy. That's a thick ass boy. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I mean this card seems fine. I don't think it's great. I would definitely play it limited one hundred percent of the time just because it's a one five. Uh, I have a, a hard time playing a 4-mana 1-5 in standard. But, uh... Talran's more frail, but, I mean... 2-2 two, two 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 flyers instead of 1-1 one, one flyers is pretty relevant. Very. I don't know. I'm on the fence. I think it's a good card. I just... Being a good card does not necessarily make it standard playable, is the thing. Right. Uh, Muse Drake. 4-mana flying when it enters the battlefield. Draw a card for a 1-3. That seems bad. I am not amused. Is this a commander card? Show us with your finger. Show me with your finger. Narco Amoeba. Two mana. You guys know what Narco Amoeba does. It's a 1-1. One, one. If it would put, me, put into the graveyard from your library, you may put it on the battlefield. Yeah. Obviously relevant with Surveil. Will this card see playing constructed? No, nope, I don't think so. Standard? I don't think so. The, 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 you're doing other things with Surveil. You just don't want this in your opening hand either. You never want to draw these. What can you... What, what does this do? So that my only thought for this card is it interacts great with um uh what's her name the golgari the golgari queen what's her name they made her a queen savra no no the planeswalker they printed the one where you could sack a dude draw, draw Vraska. Vraska, yes i couldn't think of her yeah name. right you sack a dude draw a card but, but it's like, not even that great why am i playing a one a two two that's my point a two mana one one i don't think just to sacrifice it to something else i think that there's this, better creatures i can play to do right that. i think yeah draw a card when it comes into play yeah i think that this card is um been only talked about because it's a reprint like i don't think this does anything functionally in standard yes yeah, there has to be like some kind of really really good sacrifice outlet but like a dread return yeah i don't think yeah you know I, there might be a deck in modern if this is a spirit dredging, i would be on board i'd be like yeah. oh a one one spirit but narcomy was not a spirit so really what what would that do for you a spirit you got like supreme phantom make it, it just gets bigger it gets spirit oh, all the yeah. spirit interactions 
Sure. I mean, not like there's a ton in standard. No, that, that's know? why I said that. But whatever. Narcomi was fine. It's always a fine card. I checked the release notes about mission briefing in the States. Mission briefing doesn't change when you can cast the chosen card. For example, if you chose a sorcery, you can cast it only during a main phase. When the, oh, that's stupid. It's even worse then. Like saying you can cast it this turn is really misleading. Yeah, that's then. terrible wording. Because it's almost it's almost giving you permission to violate the timing rules. It's saying you may ca- hey, I just targeted scape shift. Can I cast it? Yeah, you may cast it this turn. But I'm on my opponent's turn. You may cast it this turn. All right, I guess I'll try it. Like, it's just weird, right? It seems like it's actually giving you permission. Yeah, yeah that doesn't make doesn't sense. Work for that. That's pretty lame. Night Veil sp- Spirit. That's it's sprite, but I was trying to make I was. It, it wasn't a good meme. One, two for two flying whenever it, is, is, whenever it attacks, surveil one. That's not bad. No, this card's good and limited, I think. I mean, scry, like, I'm going to equate it to scrying again. Scrying one every turn just just because it attacks is just fine. Can we call it scry plus? Yeah, scry plus one scry every... Plus, no, scry plus... one... It. Oh, that's it, yeah. It doesn't fit with no, the number. No, we can't do that. Okay. Take it back. Sorry. Yeah, surveil one is just great. Like, this is fine. Not yeah. going to play in constructed. You're not playing one twos in constructed. What are you going to do? Omni spell adept. You mentioned this, didn't you? No, someone else did. No, Josh. Was it Josh? Five mana for a 3-4. Tap three mana and it. You may cast an instant sorcery card from your hand without paying its mana cost. Okay, so this. Can I end of turn cruel ultimate my opponent on their turn with this? I imagine so. I don't know. I would assume so. Why wouldn't it allow you to cast... Why wouldn't you allow you to ignore or cast casting timings? I don't know. It literally implies that it can. I mean, my problem with this is that it's a 3-4 for 5. If this is for 3 mana, if this is a 3-4 for 3 mana in blue, that would be broken. Yeah, this It'd should be, very be good. This should be just like the, um, what's the card that you and I played uh, in Battle Bond? It's a, it's a small creature, it costs 3, it's blue, and it allows you to discard a card at random from your hand. And if it's a creature, you make a copy of it. It's Arcane being, Artisan. Yes, that's what this reminds me of, but a very, very, very worst standard playable one. Yeah. Or, Arcane Artisan is playable. also 0-3. The, I mean, uh, the three, four three. is irrelevant because you you want this for the ability. If you're right, of course. It. But you want it to survive as well. Sure. Right? And five mana is a lot deeper into the game yeah, than three mana is. The fact that it costs five. If this was uh, a three mana one three, if there was a high enough powered incinerator sorcery, I could see it possibly seeing play, but we're nowhere near that. We're so far off the mark. It's actually backwards on the way into it. If it doesn't specify a time period, then it must happen while the ability is on the stack. No, that's weird. I mean, I don't think I don't think that's. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, what do you think? This card to be? Is this card playable? No. Commander no way. It is. Oh, it's definitely playable, Commander. <laughs> like I would definitely put this in my deck and just hope no one kills it, and then I get to do all my busted instant and sorceries. The problem is the card also has to be in your hand, right? Like, mm. yeah. so at at most you're getting a minor mana discount off of this, like. There's no cruel ultimate in standard, so the most expensive instant or sorcery is going to be like five or six, I bet. And that's pushing it. I can't even think of a six mana sorcery or instant. So, I mean, like, you're getting a couple mana discount off of this in standard, so I don't think this is going to see any standard play, obviously. Pass wall adept. Two mana for a one three. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Which is nice. It doesn't have to tap it. That's a nice one of. And, um... A one three is a nice little body for a, for a two mana creature. And you can activate it as many times as you yeah, want. You target yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Yeah, obviously not. We're not constructing with this, but in limited, that's fine. Quasi duplicate, three mana. Create a token that's like this is just cackling counterpart at sorcery speed, right? With jumpstart. Yeah, cackling counterpart of flashback. Cackling counterpart is three mana instant. Create a token oh. that's a copy of target creature you control with flashback. I this didn't is, know it had flashback. This is a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Both are, are creatures you control, so you have to have the creature. And this just says jumpstart. So. Flashback on counterpart is seven, but you don't have to discard a card and it's an instant. Whereas this is three, but you have to discard a card. I don't know. Like, I don't like this specific kind of, of copy, create a token creature, because you have to control the creature. So it's like the definition of win more, where it's like, well, I already have a 5-5, five five, so I guess I'll just make another 5-5. Five five. Whereas, like, it's it also targets. So, yeah, like, if you target your 5-5 five five and they kill it, you're yeah. just like, oh, well, I guess I get no 5-5s five now. Whereas, like, this card's playable. yeah, this card's not playable. And, like, whereas if they have a 5-5 five, five and you copy that, like, you're just probably always getting the I remember card. when they spoiled that card, too. They tried to make it a huge thing. Like, it was... Because I think that was, like, the first Jumpstart card they spoiled. They were, like, making it a huge thing. Like, it was so good. But it's it's just not that good at all. Two mana for a draw card, Jumpstart. This is just a... No. This card's bad. 
This card's bad. This is worse than Think Twice. This I would is just, bad. Yeah. This card's a trap. I don't even think it's a trap. A trap implies that it's good, but it's it looks good, but it's really bad underneath. I don't think this is trapping anyone. It's just bad. Like, it's just, it cycles, and you're actually down. It's just not even a... It's like a one-for-one. One. Not, not even a one-for-one. It's not even a one-for-one. One. Well, it is, because you're like you're trading one card for one card, right? Oh, I guess so. And then you jump start, and you're doing the same you thing. No, you're right. You're one-for-one. One. Yep, it's, yep. it's two one-for-ones, but you, actually, net, you net nothing. Yeah. Selective Snare, X and a blue. Return X target creatures of the creature type of your choice to their owner's hand. I like this card. I think this card has potential, but based on, you know, tribal decks and standards. Um, so the thing is, like, even for two mana... What? Oh, a sorcery's rough. Yeah, I didn't. But for two mana, you're gonna always bounce one creature. Mm -hmm. So you're if if they have a Lorgoyf, if they have a beast, if they have whatever whatever you want to target, you name that type, and you can just bounce that one guy for two mana. Totally fine. Um, oh, that's certainly limited playable. Oh, unlimited. Yeah, I'll just play this because at, at at worst you bounce one guy. At best you you bounce bounce three or all their tokens or what have you. Um, don't see this planned and constructed. I think we just have way better options like blink of an eye and. It would need to be instant speed to to matter. Sinister Sabotage. Now we're talking three mana, one blue, blue, counter target spells, surveil one. Yeah, this is just Disallow. And standard Disallow playable. was a uh, standard staple for the longest time. Put it on the list. Yeah, so this card's great. Um, you don't have to actually have this explained to you. It's a, it's a cancel with upside. It's a Disallow. It's it's your it's your standard three mana counter spell for the format. Hey, a good card. <laughs> hey, look at that. Thoughtbound Phantasm. One mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Back to the one mana train. Uh, with Defender, all right, we're going down. Whenever you Surveil, put a 1-1 counter on it. Okay, 3-3, three, 4-4, three, four, four, et cetera. As long as it has three or more 1-1 one, one counters on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. That's interesting. This card's busted. This is standard playable. This card will be in standard. This card seems very good. Also, it's not a... This card makes me feel like it's an illusion, you know, where it's like if they target it, it'll kill it because it's very strong. Um, but no, I just think this is a good card. This card's great. 2-2 two, two for 1 as a Defender is also fine in, a, in a blue deck. Relevant. But then, like... If you surveil three times, it's just a five-five attacker that you got for you for a one-man investment. Reminds me of Jace's Phantasm, kind of. Yeah, it does have a Jace's Phantasm feel to it, right? Uh, except I almost think this is easier to to turn on because yes. it's just doing things 100%. you already want. Especially when like most of the good cards we've Dream Eater, oh, Mission oh. Briefing, and Sinister Sabotage, and the Draw Two card. It's a spirit. All of the four cards that we've we've looked at that are on our list right now, let you surveil. So that's that's kind of interesting. I'll, I'll write this down. Yeah, I think you should. I think this is 100% going to be a 4 of in, in an in a archetype. In a Although I do not like a Phantasm not being an illusion, right? Aren't Phantasms typically illusions in Magic? Let's find out. I love the art on Cackling Fiend. It's it's also the same art as Cackling Witch. The same art as Darren Baron, Brian Despain. Brian Depain. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, Gossamer Phantasm, when it comes to target ability, sacrifice it. Well, I guess there's only some of them. Summer Spirits, too. Phant half Phantasmal half. Dragon, Phantasmal Bear. Illusion Horse. Whatever. It's 50-50 it's, it's between Spirits and, and Illusions, so I guess that's fine. Anyway. Unexplained Disappearance, two mana, return target creature to its owner's hand. Surveil one. Doesn't seem bad. Nah, it's just a, it's an unsummon for two with, with, a, with a Surveil on it. Um, it makes my uh, Thought Bound phantasm better so i don't know if i'm gonna play this over blink of an eye ever i was just gonna say is it better than blink of an eye? no i don't is think this, so it, 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 you look at your deck and say is it better if i draw this on turn set and any turn past turn four i'm just gonna want to draw a card rather than surveil and i'll pay two mana to do it mm -hmm. vidalcan mesmerist two mana this is weird art <laughs> it's like powder when they move powder two mana for a two one whenever it attacks target creature and opponent controls get negative two negative zero yeah I mean, I might play it in my limited deck if I don't have if I need a two drop. I don't like two ones in limited that much, but the ability is decent. I feel like we've looked at a lot of art on cards, like we keep scrolling through them, and the actual person or whatever, like whatever the creature or thing is, has been in such contrast versus the surroundings. Like, look how I, I feel like they paste it ahead on the yeah, on the shirt. The head like, is is almost photorealistic. Yeah, yeah that's, I agree. Uh, yeah, we've seen a lot that. of cards like that. A lot of weird art. Wall of Mist. Two mana, an 05 Defender. This is just printed, was it not? This is an M19, isn't it? I don't know. You you're the limited guy. <laughs> it should have float. No, float. You're like, you're the limited guy, which means no one will ever play this outside of limited. Yeah, it's an M19. This is like two back-to-back -back sets with Wall of Mist. It's It might be it might be on par to be the uh, the new... 
What's, oh yeah the what's six the dude? dude i can't think of the dude's name oh god <laughs> which is really kind of funny. i even said it to you the other day for some reason watcher in the mist this is actually how rob uh usually watches the stream right <laughs> through the window, window. Yeah. <laughs> five mana for a three four flyer when watcher the mist enters the battlefield surveil two i mean you're gonna play this in the limited every single time this yeah. is literally again oh, i hate to make super obvious comparisons but this is a cloud reader sphinx from dominaria a three four flyer for five mana that lets you scry two slash surveil two it's the same card they just literally replaced scry with surveil and they, they added one more blue because um, Cloud Reader Sphinx is only one blue. So I don't know why they added one blue because it's the same card, but, you know, Colossal Dreadmaw, that's what it is. Yeah, so I mean, again, this card's going to be great and limited. You'll play 3-4 Flyer with Surveil 2 every single time you get it. Uh, you will not be playing it for constructing. Look at the little guy. Wish Coin Crab. Four mana oh, yeah. for, for a 2-5. Let's keep it moving. Just... All right. See you later. And that's the blue. All right. Sweet. So for blue cards, we have the draw two card. I don't know the name. We have Dream Eater, Mission Briefing, Sinister Sabotage, and Thoughtbound Phantasm. There are 30 cards in each color, except for green. There are 31 because there's the buy box promo. So out of 30 cards, three white cards really stood out for us. And out of 30 cards, five blue cards stood out for us. That's not a lot. That's 60 cards. We have seven of them. That's probably 11% maybe. I don't know. That's always that's always the discouraging aspect of, of magic sets is that like there's a lot of cards that are just realistically not that playable. Uh, what are you laughing at? Or what I miss? I'm laughing was because it I, I reread the I missed the last time it was printed. Wow. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> yes. you, you, you didn't miss much. That's for sure. <laughs> Barrier of Bones, another one mana creature. O three 3 with Defender. This, how many walls are in this set? I well, We've seen one in blue, I think. No, oh, there's no, definitely... Two. There's the one a, that gets bigger, yeah. Wall of Mist, and then this card. Feels like more. Because you saw a card that's... There is a card in the set that specifically says it can't be blocked by Creatures of a Defender. That's not why. Could be. <laughs> Does it, I haven't seen it yet. When Barrier of Bones enters the battlefield, <laughs> surveil one. I'm never playing this. I'm yep. not playing an O3 just because it has Scry on it. If it had one power, there's some sort of relevance. In Stop a calling that, Surveil doesn't. Scry. There are two different abilities. It's Scry Plus. Scry Plus? Scry Plus. Bar here. Why don't you guys move this? Like I get it. You don't want it to be on the screen, but I don't think it matters. That's that's closed. It's closed and full. But I appreciate your you're looking out. Karen, concern. Yeah, that's better. That's fine. Michael. Three one flyer for four. Oh god. Even in limited, I'm reluctant to play this. No way. It's just blood operative. I like a lot. Blood operative is black black one for a three one with life link. Uh, it's a vampire assassin, which is good for because Ixalan is still in the set, so there's vampire synergies. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile a card from a graveyard. Not super relevant, but not irrelevant either. Like, this could be very good. I think that's... Ex I, I actually think that's extremely relevant, New Standard. I don't know if it's extremely relevant. There, I think it's corner case scenarios where this is actually good. Very good. You're going to have at least two types of decks that are going to be reliant on graveyards. At least have rel reliance on graveyard synergies. Once you get to blue-black, Golgari will have it. There will be Gol Golgari decks that are non-just regular, you know, mono-green stoppy lists that splash black. And then you're going to have Surveil decks. And there has to be payoffs for the ability of Surveil. Sure. But I think a lot of them are undergrowth. So, yeah, I guess Exiling Creatures is fine. Yeah. Um, Brandon, I actually agree that with, the, with the philosophy that you do need bad cards. Um, Mark, Mark Rosewater has a philosophy that you actually need bad cards because without bad cards, you don't actually get to see the disparity. And you can't really determine what a good card is without a bad card. It's it's whole good and evil, right? Like, without evil, you would actually don't know the, the, you know, the, the difference, right? It's hard to tell. Um, the different the, the problem is that like I don't think you need this many bad cards, this many cards that won't see playing constructed formats, and I think that with so few cards seeing playing constructed formats, it really doesn't uh, foster a, a healthy constructed environment. Like I can't obviously I can't say just yet, but we're losing four sets of blue and white cards, four sets of those, and so far we only got seven blue and white cards to replace them it's too diluted is the problem it's extremely saying, diluted. it shouldn't be 50 percent of the it 30. doesn't give you options if i'm playing a blue white deck there is one specific blue white deck i can play rather than multiples because 50 you know 48 of the cards just weren't good enough 53 of the cards whatever it is whatever ridiculous amount just weren't good enough but anyway the point is the rest of this card says when you surveil, if blood operative is in your graveyard, you may pay three life if you do return it to your hand, which is great because I like the 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 synergy, this uh, the symmetry between it having three power and life link yep. and costing you three life yeah, to return great. it, um, because you can just keep returning it. 
you know, it's just it's just good. It's just a good card. I, I think this card's good. I wish it was one black because it's a little restrictive at two black, but um, I think it's fine. I like this card a lot. I'm going to write it down. Yeah, you should. I think this will, I think this will 100% see play. Like a 3-1 lifelink is just strong, especially against like aggressive red decks. Undead gladiatorisk. Burglar rat. Burglar rat. 1-1 one, one for two. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. This is a functional reprint. Of chitter, uh, not chittering rats, but this is not a reprint. No, chittering rats is brutal. No, it's ravenous. It's ravenous rats. This is not. Ravenous rats makes each player, doesn't it? Sure. What this says each opponent. This ravenous rats doesn't make you discard a card. I think it it does. Yes, it does. I think there's no other two mana rat that makes only them discard a card. Target opponent discards a card. Ravenous rats. It's it's target opponent. It's not each opponent, but like I'm confusing it with a different rat. I don't know what you're thinking of, but ravenous rats never made you discard. Used to play. Used to be played in the in the Kamigawa block. There's a rat that's got purple in the art. It's black and purple. That's what I'm thinking of. It says each player discards a card. I like this card. Doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not going to play this in constructed. It's a two mana. I mean, it might be good if you have like Vraska actually. Like there might be a value Vraska deck where you're like two mana rat, three mana rat. They've discarded two cards. Four mana Vraska, sack my rat, draw a card, gain a life. I, I mean, it's not bad. I actually think the Vraska has potential. I think it just depends on what kind of shell you can find for her. So. so I've never looked into the card. I've never tried to build a deck around this. But the fact that I know of a one drop that makes them discard a card and then this card makes them discard a card, that means that there could there could be something to it. I just laughed at Lavender Rat. <laughs> Lavender Rat. All right. Anyway. Child of Night. This is a child of the... Oh, wait. I it's This is... Yeah, this is like... I was like, wait a minute. Child of Night. That sounds so familiar. Oh, because it's literally just Child of Night. That was also in M19. That sure. part's pretty sick, though. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't... I like... You don't need to put five reprints of the exact previous set in the next set. I don't know why... So who do I blame for you snapping at me because they reprinted? Uh, listen. Creeping Chill. Four mana. It deals three damage to each opponent and you gain three life. Commander Staple Mike? No. When Creeping Chill is put into your graveyard from your library, you may exile it if you do. It deals three damage to each opponent, and you gain three life. This is a card where, like, I could see you playing it in the Surveil deck, because, cool, like, you can get some in- you can get some incremental value from the... But then, like, you draw two of these in your opening hand, and you're like, oh, great. This is a card where, like, you want four of them, because you want to be able to Surveil into it to put it in your graveyard. But then you're just increasing the odds of this four-mana clunky sorcery being in your hand. <laughs> this card has no chance. And you just want to cry. So this card's part of a combo that I've read a lot about where if you have these in your deck and you're playing it with the five mana demon that you pay two life and surveil, it allows you to, to surveil, um, eating them for the damage. And then if you have a, the third part of a combo that which gets pumped by each time that you surveil, it allows you, you can, you can actually accumulate upwards of like 18 to 19 damage on a one turn swing. And that only takes like seven seven cards, right? It's only like a seven card combo. Right? No, it doesn't. It literally, you're talking the demon? casting casting the demon. Uh huh. Having this in your library. How much does you how much do you surveil for? It costs you pay two life to surveil. I think you pay pay two life to surveil too. So the the if how much at, life are you gonna have at well, turn, if you're, turn if you're five at 18, or six? Well, I mean, if you're playing, I mean, I'm not saying it, this is a, uh, a slam dunk. This is gonna be played, but I mean, it's it's possible. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Dead weight, one mana, negative two, negative two. This card's great. Great card, great reprint. I like this art too. This art's fantastic. Where like the Sick. focus is on the uh, the the ball, yeah, from the ball and chain, and like you can see the background of this, the the dude, where he, he's the you'd, like the focus is on the dead weight. That's pretty nice. Yeah, card will probably see play. I'll put it in the. This is also great in uh, Shadows of Innistrad standard because they had Delirium. Yep, this is a sideboard card. But this is definitely a one mana. Like this is just one mana disfigure, but it goes to the. It's like a sorcery speed instead of an. And it stays. So and it's like, good for Tarmoglyph. Yeah. So. Deadly Visit. Five mana destroy creatures. Surveil 2. I'll 100% play this in limited every single time I open it. It's the contract killing of the format. Exactly. But uh, you're not going to get me to play five mana for a sorcery in, in standard. So get wrecked. Doom Whisper. Robert's favorite card in the set. No, it's not. Six Six Trample Flying. I actually like this card. Um, I don't know if it will see player because it's just... I don't know if it's better than the other options. I don't know if it's better than like Bells and Lock. Is there a four... Uh, yeah, there's Rites of... Rights of Bells and Lock? Your rights of Rights of Bells and Lock, yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I think it's what it's called. Yeah, you have one right here. And um yeah, we don't have to look for it. It's it's fine. You don't have to go looking through cards. I we get it. We understand. Um but there's no like desecration demon or abyssal persecutor type card, right? There's no other six six for four. Uh, there is, it's in green. It's the Nullhide Ferox. It's not a, it's not a flyer though, it's not a flying trampler. Oh, I, all these creatures are flying tramplers, right? 
Or Desecration of Demon, I guess, doesn't have trample. It just gets bigger. I mean, this is not... I mean, like, you want to say this is kind of nuts, so I agree with you. I think the stats are great, but the problem is, like, uh, Demon of Catastrophes, that's what it was. The M19 one, Demon of Catastrophes. That's what I was looking for. Um, Like, Demon of Catastrophes has seen no play. I mean, the downside is you sack a creature, but it's also just a 6-6 flyer with flying and with trample and haste and or trample and flying there's a difference though because demon of catastrophes if you go okay turn four play my demon they go cast down my turn this they can't do that you can gain a you can actually like gain advantage off it. Of it. yeah that the the ability makes this card busted Be, being able to pay two lives for real two that's busted i don't think that's busted that i think is, it's good i think you're undervaluing surveil and i know i know how highly you think of surveil i know you think it's great if this said scry two, would it be as appealing to you in a format where scrying mattered, yes, this is a format I don't think where constructed. I don't think constructed has proven to be a format where cons- where surveil matters. I do not think constructed has proven itself to be a surveil matters format. I, well, obviously not because we haven't seen it until just now. Correct. That's right. my but, point. But my point is, I. I but think- you're assuming under the assumption that there are a ton of surveil decks and everyone's graveyard is super super important. Yeah, that's great. I'll mill my whole deck in there because obviously it matters. But I don't think so, I don't think we're there yet. So if there is a deck right that surveil matters. You can agree that that ability is busted. Yes. Okay. Because then you get to combo off of, uh, essentially, and like I'll surveil ten life if I need to at that point, just to put ten cards in my graveyard because surveilling matters. You know. I can see you playing this with mending of dominaria. Imagine this in well, yeah, that's great in a Madrata deck, but like the Madrata deck should also have other ways to do this. I'm not going to say I don't actually dislike this card. I I like this card as much as I like most four mana six six flying trampling creatures. I think they're great. <laughs> However, the problem is sometimes they just don't see play. This, the, That's what it comes down to. It's bottom line. Eleven bottom line. secret herbs and spices says if I had to surveil two, I would keep both mics on top of my library. <laughs> hey, I got bad news for you. If both mics were on top of your library, your library would just. I got cease bad news for exist. you. Both both mics belong in the graveyard. Oh, wow. <laughs> Douser of lights, five mana for a four five. Uh, what does that say? What is the ability? There is not. Oh, okay. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Gruesome Menagerie, five mana ch- for a sorcery. Choose a creature card with converted mana cost one in your graveyard, then with two, and then with three. This card's fantastic. I like this card a lot. This card teeters between excellent or super unplayable. It reminds me of the card. That's every combo card. That's like Scape Shift. Right. Like, so Scape Shift teeters on incredible de- or terrible. It's dependent, right? It's dependent on what's in what's in uh, standard. So like there are cards in the past where you can bring two creatures back from the graveyard to the battlefield. They saw zero play. But at five mana, five's not that bad. So if you have like a black white knights deck, this is extremely relevant. You know what I mean? Also, uh, I don't know if you knew this. Standard is very heavily it's a, it's a surveil format. So being <laughs> like you get the creatures in the graveyard from all the surveil. You had sarcasm you cast this. when you started talking. Was it tinged? You, it was coming out of your nose. It was, it was dripping yeah, off I, my I started effect. laughing because I could see it. I felt like, bad here we go. You. Here we go. I felt bad for you. Did just, you know where it was going, or did you just know it was coming? Well, it's, what's amazing is your your voice spewed. It, it came from the nose, and then you just like right at me. I felt yeah. It. So it, the difference, the thing about sarcasm is that it doesn't travel on normal sound waves. Mm-hmm. So you feel it differently when it when it hits you. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Hired Poisoner, 1-1 one, one, Death Touch for 1. This is just Typhoid Rats. This is another reprint. I just made it a Human Assassin. <laughs> human Assassin. Cool. Crawl Swarm, 5 m- Manners. For a 4-1 Flyer, discard a creature card, return it from your graveyard to your hand. That's not terrible. I mean, for limited, obviously. Constructed, yes. you're never putting this in your deck, ever. Except for the fact that Standard is Surveil-oriented. It's a very heavy Surveil format. Yeah. So you could get this guy back if you mill it. <laughs> And then you're actually discarding another card, if which is good plus it. because of the surveil. You scry plus it. Scry plus it. Scry plus it. Yeah, scry plus one. Sure. Sure. Oh, I think you have some sarcasm stuck in your beat. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> that's awkward. Okay. Okay. Loth, Lotleth Troll. Uh, it harkens back to the Lotleth. To the Lotleth Troll, actually. This is Lotleth Giant. I actually had the other Lotleth guy. Lotleth is hard to say. Say Lotleth five times. Lotleth, Lotleth, Lotleth. <laughs> I think we've made the point. All right. <laughs> so many X ones in this set. That's I agree with you. I think they're like, hey, listen, if we take cards like Cunning Spark Mage and is it Staticaster, if we stop printing things like that, we can just make everything a friggin' X one. And it seems to be working. It seems to be enjoying. Uh, uh, it seems to be successful. Lot less giant. Seven mana for a six five with undergrowth. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to target opponent for each creature card in your graveyard. Surveil standard. I don't ever want to pay seven for Not this. Not even close. Um, 
if this was if this was like Gurmag Angler where it just costs less for each creature in your graveyard, maybe. We have one of those. Um, but I don't like if I have four creatures in my graveyard, I don't want to deal deal four to their face. If it was if it was to any target, it'd be better. That would be sweet. Because but then still you're still paying is. But yeah, that's the thing. You're still paying seven for like a Shriek Maw, which is still not broken. I like paying two for my Shriek Maw. But really uncommon, like I mean, you'll kill someone with in, in limited, definitely. Like you'll have seven mana, you'll you'll have eight creatures in your graveyard, and you'll just dome their face for eight. That'll, that's definitely gonna happen, but it still costs seven mana, right? Yeah. Mausoleum Secrets, two mana, undergrowth. Search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equals the number of creatures in your graveyard. Put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Um. Wait, hold up. Okay, reveal. Yeah, I was like, where does it say reveal it? You have to reveal it. Um, I don't know. This is something. It seems flashy upon a first read, but the more you like look into the It's card, a tutor, it and then you're like, oh, it's got to be less than this. Oh, it has, bla- to be black. it has to be a black card. Right. <laughs> We're not talking about how you activate it. <laughs> oh, so here's one, of my, here's one of the things you can do with this. You can pay two, and even if you if you only have two creatures in your graveyard, you can go get a demonic tutor and then cast that instead. To get anything. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So then you just actually have diabolic tutor because you paid four mana to tutor your library. But you did do half of it at instant speed. That's true. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's a demonic tutor with kicker, or that's, not with kicker with uh, echo. So you pay two, and then the next turn you pay another two to get the the other half. That, so that's actually a great way to explain that. Yeah, that's I it. I think you just made a new mechanic. Yeah, and then uh, delayed echo. Make sure when you're surveilling all your cards, you put this right in the graveyard with the rest of them. <laughs> Mephitic vapors, three mana. All creatures get neg one, neg one until end of turn. Even your dummies. And surveil too. Is this what we've come down to? Like instead of drown in sorrow, which was all creatures get neg two, neg two, scry and two. and scry two. This is the equivalent of that. Only they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I've been wondering. All the creatures are X one in this format, so this will this is just fine. This is all you need. I've been wondering for so long why they haven't printed a three mana black neg two, neg two spell. I mean, I know we um the, the it's too powerful. Well, they have what's it's like Farsi. Right now. Yeah. It's too powerful. Well, they have the um, yeah, they haven't printed one of those city's in a while. blessing. I didn't even think of that. City's blessing one. Doesn't that do neg two neg two? Yes. Uh ascend with ascend, yeah. Uh golden demise. Golden demise, that's it, yeah. Is it neg two or neg one? Golden demise is neg two neg two. Yeah. But I'm talking about uh is it infest that you we were just talking about? The card called Infest? Yeah. No, no, no. Drown and Sorrow Drown is the Sorrow. one from uh the Theros block. Yeah. Before they printed Golden Demise, I've been sitting here wondering why we haven't gotten Drown and Sorrow. It seems like a long time. Uh long time. it was last set. It was like two sets, three sets ago. It's still fine. Midnight Reaper. This is a card people Um so not playable though, right? Neg one, neg one's just no, not enough. No, if this no. was an instant, I could see it being good, but like, it's just not. It's it's pretty much worse than Drown and Sorrow for what you're trying to do. It's no toxic deluge. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, oh boy. There's only one deluge. Midnight Reaper. I'm a toker. I'm a smoker. I'm a midnight reaper. Is that how the song goes? That was so close. Midnight Reaper. Three mana, three two. Zombie Knight. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies. It deals one damage to you, and you draw a card. This guy's a real jerk. I miss Bile Blight, too. Um, this card's good. This card's fine, yeah. Like, if they kill your guys, you get to just... Uh... He, he draws off himself, too. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Um, What was the other card? There was a card that was very similar to this. That did Grim a... Horror Specs. That's what it was from uh, Cons of Tarkir, Love yes. Love that card. And that one also had Morph, so yep. you could flip that dude up. For, for Dose, I think. I'm pretty sure Grim's Horror Specs was a preview card I did. It was. Was it, really? Wait, wow. like you previewed it? Yeah. I'm surprised you remember that. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Grim Harrowspex was my preview card. <laughs> and I have a... But Homer, on your way out, if you want to kill somebody, it would help me out a lot. That's that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, man. Because that's what it does. Like You're like, hey, if you want to help me out on your, on your way to de- on your way to your death, I'd really appreciate it. You're leaving. Uh, that's great. I like this card. Um, yeah, so this is just Grim Harrow Specs. It's a 3-2 for 3. Same cost. Same same details. Uh, so technically another reprint. Um, except it doesn't have morph, right? Also, Grim Harrow Specs says, another says whenever creature. another creature. And this one doesn't. This one deals you damage, whereas Grim Harrow Specs does not. This also says non-token. So, yeah. Oh, they both, oh, oh no, they both say non-token. non-token. This is non-token, too. Um, still playable, right? Still playable. Yes, 100%. And it's a zombie relevant and it's a knight actually mm-hmm. history of banalia mm-hmm. that's token though but it still pumps it yes correct oh my god i can't guys i can't four mana for a two three i'm already off of it undergrowth when it <laughs> enters the battlefield target creature gains menace and gets plus x for x number of creatures obviously 
I would play like one of these in my limited deck. The problem is if you play this early when you don't have any creatures in your graveyard, it's just a two four three, mana, two, three. For four. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it because it looks like it has a creepy clown on it. <laughs> I don't see a clown on that. Oh, uh, really? You see a clown? Yeah, because like it looks like she's got face makeup on. So what? Because like, she has paint on her face, shirt. she looks like a clown. All people with makeup on their face look like clowns. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Nec- <laughs> Necrotic wound. Uh, instant for one mana target creature gets negative X, negative X, negative X, negative X. That's me. That's the combination of negative and X. Of yeah, negative. Yeah, whatever. We're done. Hmm. Uh, where X is the number of creatures in your graveyard. If that creature would die, exile instead. Like again, in I, a surveil format, this card. It's is sur- good. Yeah, it's a surveil format, guys. It's really good. I don't know. This one seems fine. I don't really like this though. Man. I like fungal infection. Like you're gonna, they're gonna have a five five, and you're gonna have four creatures in your graveyard, and this is gonna feel like the worst top deck you've ever seen, especially if you have no way to get more creatures stuck in your hand, and, and, and you have to show them that you have it too. You're yeah, like, like still have. I can, I'll take four what less. What if you have two? Use the first one, yes. then you use the second one. You could use the first one on your own creature. Fantastic. Yeah. And then use it. This is like when you when you draw the Snapcaster Mage in like Legacy, and you're like, you pick it up, and you're like, or in Standard the Gearhawk, they they draw their one card for turn, and then they're like. <laughs> you're like i know they're hold on <laughs> no they draw it and they, they count their graveyard they're like okay okay <laughs> all right and then you're like how many creatures you got and they're like four and why why do you and ask you look down at your five five and you're like cool swing <laughs> yeah i don't think this card's gonna see playing constructed like i don't think this replaces fatal push by any means and no like by the t- so here's the thing i don't think the the speed you can get creatures in your graveyard scales well with removal, right? <clears throat> like if they play a, a two one or a one one or a two two one or a two two on turn one, which is which is common now. Now this is the, this is the world we live in. Uh, I don't think you're also going to have two creature cards in your graveyard by turn two. If they play a three three on turn two, which is also possible, or a three two, I still don't think you're going to have two or three creature cards in your graveyard. Creature specifically by turn two or three, like <clears throat> you're not scaling proportionally to the creatures you're trying to kill. No. So, like, on turn five, if they play that 6-6 six, six demon, I don't think you're going to have six creatures in your graveyard on turn five. It's just not going to happen. So, no. You can put that in the garbage can. Never it, happens. It's never... It's, it never happens. Yeah, like, if you're trying to have six creatures in your graveyard by turn five, never happened. <laughs> Three mana. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from that player's graveyard or hand and exile it. This is just coercion. Uh, literal coercion, but it exiles instead of um, discards it, right? I don't know. You don't know what coercion does? I've heard of the card and I can picture it. Is it from <laughs> I, Tempest? No. It's from Visions. But so, Visions. Uh, I don't know how to spell coercion. Super that was nurse. close. It's uh, the A-N. Yeah. That's not what I thought it was. Or this is just a Oh, reprint. it actually wasn't Tempest. You're right. Yeah. And it's got the... Oh, there's Visions too. It's Tempest and Visions. Yeah. It was reprinted. Okay. Yeah. Look at the target player's hand. Choose one of those cards. That player discards that card. Oh, but this hits graveyards though. Oh, no. I hit, I hit a thing. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, help. my gosh. Okay. Target player reveals their hand. You may choose an outlet. This, with this hits graveyards though, what is it? Yeah, doesn't it? You may choose a non-land card. Oh, you can choose an nice from the graveyard too. Beforehand. Yeah, all right, that's a little more versatile. Still not playable, right? I'm not gonna pay three mana for this. No, not if you have that blue black. Like one. your graveyard's not that important to me, man. Mm-mm. I'm sorry. Mm-mm. Pilfering imp, another one mana card. How many one mana cards are in this set? It's got to be a really high. There's a really high density of one mana cards in this in this set. One mana flyer for one. Wait. That's, That's not, not a bad limited card. One one flyer for one. Sacrifice it. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non land card from it. That player discards that card. Activates ability only any time you can. Yeah, but isn't that the same as this? You're paying three mana to make them. No, it's them. not because that's a card you can play on turn one and get minimal damage in, and it sits, and then turn five or turn six in limited, you can steal a bomb. I like that. That's the only reason I think it's good because you it can also look- is uncommon. So you can tell. You can kind of tell it's a little, a little higher on the power level. Little push. No, I definitely don't think it's push. Push is not... I would definitely not say push, per se. Little poke. Either way, Plague Crafter, two mana, three mana for a 3-2. When it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or planes or planeswalker. Yeah, I love this card. Each player who can't discards a card. That's actually pretty sweet. Yeah, this card's Because awesome. you can always sacrifice this to itself, obviously. I used to love Merciless Executioner. Yeah, but being able... Like, if they're if you, if it's your control opponent and all they have yeah. is Teferi on board... Mm-hmm. No, it's just better. I'm saying That's I love really this card. strong. Yeah, I like this card. But I'm saying it's not even it doesn't even compare with like Merciless Execution or whatever it was called. Mm-hmm. Fleshbag Marauder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plague Crafter. You remember that little? Yeah, uh, that's definitely playable. This card's great. The Fleshbag art with the little uh, gobbly goo guy. He's all chunky. 
He got the little arms. Yeah, he can take Prince of Fame, four mana. He's like, we're moving on. Target spell. <laughs> yeah, well, we have, we gotta get through a lot of cards here, guys. Keep going. This spell costs two less to cast if it if it targets a legendary creature, destroy target creature. Uh, so it's kind of like a reverse cast down where it's two mana to kill a legendary creature, uh, four mana to kill any other creature, and you surveil two. Contempt is just still a four of in black decks. Yeah, I would just rather play Contempt yeah. over this, despite the Surveil. Again, though, because it is such a Surveil-heavy format, uh, the Exile is relevant on Vraska's Contempt, so... I don't foresee this seeing play, but... I don't know. Ritual of Soot. Four mana, destroy all creatures with convert mana cost three or less. This is actually probably a, a, yep. a busted card. It's against, a bob. Uh, this is a bob. All it's funny, because this card is actually... Um, depending on how aggressive the format is, this could make literal aggressive decks... Almost unplayable. It, it could. Sure. Right? Like, if they go turn three, History of Benalia, make a token. You go turn three, land. They go turn three, History of Benalia, another guy. You go turn four, kill both their tokens and whatever guy they make. Like, even if you get that three for one, it's still very, very good. Yeah. Extremely good. Yeah, this card seems great. Uh, it's restrictive, obviously. And, like, compared to, like, a Languish or a it's Damnation, a it's worse. It's it's that sideboard but sweeper it, that control has. It does what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. Severed Strands. Two mana, additional cost. Sacrifice a creature. You gain life. You go to the sacrifice creature's toughness. Destroy terror creature and opponent control. That's... That's not bad. It's I, a sorcery, which yeah. I don't like, but I think it's I think it's actually very, very strong at an instant. I like the... Uh, then you can respond to removal. I like the Neg 5, Neg 5 one over this one. The, it does the same thing, but it's an instant. Yeah, but this kills any creature. So it can kill the 6-6 six, six demon, which is really relevant for the surveil format. Mm -hmm. And also you gain life equal to the creature's toughness, which is not nothing. It's something, depending it, on the size of it. That's true. It's actually something. It unless scales. it's a zero, unless it's an X zero. Sure. Uh, it's always going to be something. There's a few of those. No. There's one of those. There's Force of Savagery, There's... and I don't think that's in standard. Okay. Well, whatever. Um, the, the thing is, like, I keep expecting the destroy to be tied into the creature's toughness, but it's not. It's literally just destroy a creature and opponent controls. Bone Splinter is just better than this. Is it? Yep. There's a, I, I think there's a significant difference between one and two mana. I agree with you. I also think there's a significant difference between gaining two life or three life or no life. So, I mean, I think it just depends. Like, in an aggressive format, like, I don't know if you're really maximizing your mana, right? Like, if I pay... I don't know. I, I think it's. I don't think it's unplayable. Mm. The fact is, I think Bone Splinters is also not seeing any play, so I don't think you're looking for this True. type of effect, right? True. So, I mean, it's. I think the card is fine. I think it's great. I think it's probably a limited card. You can sacrifice your 2-2, gain 2 life, and kill their biggest guy. You're not going to be... I don't think this is going to be standard playable. Spinal Centipede. Uh, this is what I actually put it up... I put a bunch of these in Mike's bed the other, the other week. <laughs> So. Yeah, they're really nice. And they, they crawl over you. It's got a nice feeling. Because of the leg? Because of all the yeah, legs? Uh, yeah. They're friendly. That's good. I was I, I, I was hoping they wouldn't be too aggressive. 3-2 three, for 3. <laughs> when, it, when it dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. All right. Uh, Undercity Necrolisk. 4 mana for a 3-3. Three, three. You've already lost me. I'm already gone. I've checked out. 1 mana. Sacrifice another creature. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. It gains menace until end of turn. Activate it, this. Uh, that's only relevant for, for creatures that you want to sack for some reason. Well, because of the surveil format. Mm, true. So you put just them put it in, in the graveyard. graveyard. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll 100% I'll play this in limited. Never play this in constructed. Veiled Shade. 3 mana for a 2-2. Two, two. It gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Vicious Rumors. 1 mana. I like this card. It deals 1 damage to each opponent. Each opponent discards a card. Then puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. You're helping them surveil. <laughs> it's a surveil format, and you're helping Twice. them do it. Twice you're helping them surveil because you're making they them discard. discard. And the oh my, oh god. my god, you're making no their wonder it's a common. So strong, no wonder dude. it's a common. And you gain a life. I don't like this card. I do. You if they if... sacrificed a creature, it'd be one thing. But like, well, it'd be but it'd be pox, mini pox, small pox. Like you're just trading. You're trading this card for the worst card in their hand. This on its own is not good. But that followed up with a with a rat, with a one one rat that made him discard something else again. See, that's what I'm saying. There could be something there. I don't like it enough to say it's definitely constructible. Though. I look, it's not. I look at this card All like right. I told I you when I that. when I saw the set, I looked at it thinking of when you and I are going to play two at a giant. Like I, I want to play each opponent. Ooh. Yeah, I want to play D Demir. They lose like two it. life. They discard. They each discard a card. Like Commander Staple. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Whispering Snitch. Oh, there's Mike right there. <laughs> <laughs> Two mana for a 1-3. Whenever you surveil for the first time each turn, it deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. No. Not good enough. In in our in our format, though. I'll play it unlimited. Yeah. In the surveil standard? In this, no. no. Two, Two at a giant. giant. 
Oh, and now we're on the red. All right, so black cards actually had the highest density of playable cards. Blood Operative, Deadweight, Doom Whisperer, Gruesome Menagerie, Midnight Reaper, Plague Crafter, and Whisper, and uh, Ritual of Soot. That's seven cards. Seven cards compared to five in blue and three in white. So, uh, so far out of 90 cards, we're looking at 16. No, 15. So 15 out of 90? What is that, one-sixth? One-sixth of the playable cards, so less than less 20%. Than so, I mean, it doesn't doesn't break down evenly, but less than 20%, more than 15. So, like, 17% playable. Also, the, the uh, there's an abundance in black. Black almost had an equal number as uh, blue and white combined, right? Arc Light Phoenix. How do you feel about Phoenixes, bro? I love Phoenixes. I actually like this card. Four mana for a 3-2 with flying and haste. So, I just pop this bad boy into play and go to town. Can we... I'm going to scoot this just a little bit. There we go. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've cast three or more instant and sorcery spells, this, that's a lot. Return Phoenix from the graveyard to the battlefield. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this card? Do you like it? Um, I need to play with uh, blue and red for a bit before I can say it's good, but I think it has potential. I don't like this card. <clears throat> three does seem like a lot, a lot. But I was just playing a mono blue deck that I was easily casting three spells in one turn. But also, like, okay, look at, like, Chandra's Phoenix, which is a 2-2 two -two for three. Like... Four mana is a lot in standard, just because it has haste. Like, 3-2 for four, like, it dies to a lot of things. It's a surveil format. You can just surveil it straight to the graveyard to bring it back, though. <laughs> mana spray is also... Magma spray is also a card in this format, so you could just... Uh, is it... No, I think magma spray is gone. Was it... Uh, was it Amonkhet? I think it was. Dude, your laugh was hilarious. I don't think that... Because we were laughing, they picked it up. Yeah, it was Amonkhet. All right. Laugh that's, that's good. That's good. I'm going to get some water before I die. Well. Don't can run. you grab me a... Don't run. A sun kissed sure. from the fridge? And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think this card's super good. I, I think it. I think it could find a home in like the aggressive, like in the spells deck, right? In the blue red, like um, one five poop out illusion dudes. At, with the Adelie's deck. No, no, no. Well, I don't think it's an Adelie's deck card. Why you're playing spells in that deck? Because you want to pump your Adelie's already. You have like opt and you know, you have you have spells basically. Is the point? Yeah. Like if you go opt lightning strike. So when I see Adelie's, something. Adelie's is like a twelve to sixteen creature deck. Because Adelie's ability pumps wizards, her other wizards with spells, though. Right, I get that. So Adelie's is like a is like a forty to sixty split. This card right here to me is like an eighty percent spell deck. This is a I run this and I run the one five, and then the rest of my deck is spells. Let's I don't keep, know. I'm fifty going. fifty on it. I'm fifty fifty. Like on I said, I, I'm not saying it's definitively playable. Barging sergeant, otherwise known as barging sarge, barge sarge. I don't know why we didn't call it that. Barge. Five mana for a four two haste with mentor. Book Devour. Did you see how fast life? I, you know, it's funny you skip past that because I actually thought you were gonna say we've been talking about mentor and like mentor locking yourself. The fact that it attacks the turn it comes into play and it will basically almost always pump something. Oh, I'll is play it unlimited, but I mean, two toughness is nothing. No, the problem is you're gonna attack with this guy. It'll give one counter to another and attacking dies. creature, and then it dies that combat. Uh, it's a removal spell. For five mana. It's a removal spell. But it's oh, a removal spell yeah, for like five. a two-two. You're right. I forgot. It was like five. it's five mana. I like, thought it was four. Oh, gross. Get out of here. Thanks. Book Devourer. Where's Tramp. One? You didn't ask for anything. Oh, I just thought he knew. Well, after the red, we get more to take a break. Woohoo! Six mana for Book Devourer. Four, five with Trample. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may discard all the cards in your hand if you do draw that many cards. It's an interesting effect, but six mana? Six mana is a lot. Yeah. I'll see you later, Beast. Command the Storm deals five damage to target creature for five mana. This is a great removal spell. For limited. Damage. I'm never going to play it in my constructed deck. No. Okay. That's a worse barrage of boulders. Cosmotronic? Cosmotronic wave? Four mana? Cosmotronic. Supersonic. Cosmotronic. Cosmotronic. <laughs> hey, that baby, I take... You, have, you ever just seen that video? No. That was good, though. Don't want to get demonetized, bro. What's it? I don't think... What? Who is that? Type in supersonic video. Um. Anyway, read this card. What does this card do while I look this up? Uh, it's a barrage of boulders that costs one more. Is this is this touch screen? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Does Let's one damage to each creature your opponent's control? Creatures your opponent's. Oh, it's barrage of boulders. Cool. Direct current. This card. Oh, here we go. It's Lad. You ever seen this? What are we looking at right now? Hey, baby, wake up from your sleep. We have arrived onto the future, and the whole world is become. Electronic, supersonic. <laughs> That's 
what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Man. It's amazing. Anyway, it's direct current, three mana. Direct to current deals two damage to any target, and you can jumpstart it. I'm not paying three mana for this. I'm especially not playing six mana. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew of a card named Stagger Shock. It did the same four damage, uh, only it did it for three mana and not, oh, yeah, not re- two cards. That's the rebound one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to discard a card. Is this touchscreen pointing at a paper magic? <laughs> wow, that's so next level. What's a blowout limited? E- Electrostatic field. Two mana for an 4 A defender again. Why are there so many walls in this form in this static. set, man? I don't know, man. You just caught me off guard. I stopped hearing when you slapped me in the chest. Yo, my ears started ringing. Yeah, it was weird. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. Man, I don't care about it. Is this a commander staple? No, this is a two-headed giant staple. I mean, this is a storm card. What? It's storm not a, card. How is it a storm card? Because you're playing a bunch of spells in storm decks to you storm off. No. Storm is a mechanic that sure. rewards you for playing as many it's spells like as you card can. You have sure. is a great shot so yeah, right. So when you're able to do that, a er- erratic cyclops four mana for an, a zero eight trampler. I love this card. I bet you do. I like it. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Erratic Cyclops gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is that spell. So if you go, like, opt, it gets, it's a 1-8. Yep. That's so, correct. like, what spells are you casting that makes this guy big enough to do stuff with? I just think the ability is cool. It reminds me of the Cyclops. And King, okay, but King that doesn't King. make it necessarily playable. No, I didn't say that. I didn't mean that. Okay, so are we, are we officially at zero cards red that we've, we, yes, that are constructed? Yes, we have not seen okay. anything red. Stone zero. Experimental Frenzonio. Four, four mana. That's where you are. You're in the Frenzonio. Frenzonio. Four mana. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. Ooh, how exciting. You may play the top card of your library. That's more exciting. You can't play cards from your hand. And down. And To be fair, uh, in, that, done. in the uh, SCG video series, this card did really well in uh, Boros aggro deck. In standard? Yes. They did the Versus series. Oh, because you can just play, 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 play. Yep. Yeah, I can see that. This is actually a late game, like... Yeah. Because if you ever have cards in here, you don't want to play this. But if you have, if you top deck this or this is the last card in your hand, you just play it. And then, like, you're going to miss one card, probably, because you're going to draw a card for the next turn. Can't play that. But then, like, you can look at the top card. If it's a land, you can play exactly, it. Exactly. If it's a guy, right. you can play it. But the problem is, if you ever get two lands in a row, you're, you're rough. But that's, like, the same thing as if you just drew them normally, right? I think the other four mana one is just better. The one we've already had that flips into a land. Flips into a land? Yeah, yeah. Cannonball like Cannonball thing? No. You exile the top card of your library, you can cast it, and whenever you cast three spells in one turn, you flip it, and it becomes the lightning bolt on the back end. Oh, Vance's Blasting Cannons. Yes, I think that card's just yeah. better. Um, Cannons. Told you. Oh, you said Cannonball. It made me think of, like, I don't know. Yeah, like, if you're looking for a four-mana red enchantment that's going to get you multiple cards, like... There's always a card like that in standard for There is, decks. yes. Yeah. <laughs> there are 100%. Sometimes there's multiple, like Chandra and now this... Here's a card. To skip. Uh, all right, three, two for three. Boop. Um, got a nice yeah, halberd. Sorry. So you got some flavor text. You got a. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Fire urchin, two mana for a one three with trample. That's rough, man. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, it gets plus one. So this is just a fixed. Mm-hmm. It's a fixed kiln fiend with trample. Sorry, man. Plus one's not gonna do it. No. So if I play two spells, it's a three three with trample. Busted. <laughs> Goblin Banneret, one mana with for a one one with mentor. This art's terrible. <sighs> a one with mentor, you say? This is awkward. <laughs> Go on, and you can tap two to give it plus two, plus two, plus two, plus zero oh, until. Again, this is a card where like you're going to attack once with it, and then it dies, and maybe your two two gets buffed. I don't buffed. think that this is good and limited in any. I'm never going to play this. <laughs> This card is only good if you can expend the mana and you have a creature that's smaller than it. That card art is never good. That's terrible art. So, like, I mean, here's the thing, right? If your opponent has any creature, it kills this. It doesn't have trample. So, like, let's say you wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till turn six, and I'm going to pump it three times. So I'm going to make it a 7-1. Okay, in that situation, you've spent seven mana on this card in total. You have a 7-1 attacker. A, any one power creature kills it. Literally any one. B, you're giving one counter to one creature that is smaller than it. That's not worth a card in my deck. No, not even... And that's, like, the best case scenario as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, this card literally just nets you a 1-1 counter. 
and and one thing to keep in mind is that you can mentor onto it. You could put a kind of on from other mentor guys, oh, not sure, with sure. his own ability, but yeah, with yeah. like other mentor abilities. I had to read it again in case I thought I was reading it wrong. I mean, a one one a one man a one one four mentor with I mean like. I'm not going to play subpar creatures on my deck because I have... And maybe maybe I am, actually. I don't know, man. Mentor is kind of confusing because it kind of... It's one of those mechanics that's like, yeah, play bad, play a, play, a, play a subpar creature in your deck so you can take advantage of this. Make it par. This card is fantastic, and it's going right on the list. Is this a commander staple? Does this one do? It is a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two, pay 1, sacrifice it to deal 2 damage to target creature or destroy target colorless non-land permanent. Seems pretty good. So any artifact, any Karn, any any Ugin, uh, you can literally just pay one mana to kill it after this guy's on the board. Beautiful. <laughs> they Beautiful. said, I don't know how Mentor fits into the Surveil form. I don't either. That's a good question. <laughs> Mentor does sound pretty bad. I think Mentor might be a trap. Because you're going to, like, Mentor, I feel like a lot of people are going to get in this situation where they're throwing their, their big guys. Like, so here's the thing about the one one that we just talked about. It's a great guy to have your Mentor trigger onto, but you have to attack with it. In order to get the mentor trigger. So you're still attacking with it as a 2-2. And like, that's not huge. I'll just block it. I don't care. I don't care. Whenever locks with attacks, creature with defender can't block this turn. Oh, that's why. I figured out why they put all the walls in this set. Just for this guy. I said that. Did you? I literally said that. Super Sonic. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target player. Four mana? Jeez. Well, it combos with the Cyclops. And it's got jump start. How does it combo with the Cyclops? Because it makes cast, it four power? Makes it five power. Oh, yeah, four power, and then you flash it back, and then you do eight. So you have eight mana that turn, and you've discarded a card? And you just did 12 damage to their face. Well, eight, right? Four and four. No. You're recasting it again. Mm. So it'd be 12 damage. I mean, for three cards and 12 it's mana? It's really bad. It's not good. So okay. Bueno. I couldn't tell if you were actually like, I just let me know when you're being serious or not. Sorry. No, don't, that's no, no, no apology needed. I love you. I am sorry. Five mana for, okay. Well, now I'm, now I'm getting angry. Sorry. Now you need to apologize for your apologies. I'm sorry. Okay. Five mana for a three, three flyer. When it attacks, it deals one damage target creature defending player controls. This is fine for limited. It's a three, three flyer for five. You can shoot down their one ones, which there are, as we've noticed, plenty of. Uber. Uber? That means super. Okay. So I think you meant I think you meant to say many. Oh sure. Yeah. And it, I mean, instead you said super. Okay. Okay. Inescapable blaze six mana. This is what Mike. This is what Mike does in his room. He gets in an inescapable blaze. Choked up, bro. This is what kind buds does all the time. <laughs> six mana. This spell can't be countered. Deals six damage to any target. I don't actually hate this card. Let me tell you something. This card is the reason that that four mana counter spell should have been exile. And. Yeah. They just ruined the set. It's broken. You thought Carnage Tower was bad? I'm just going <laughs> to throw this at your face. You've never been blazed inescapably. Mm. I mean, or maybe you have. They go Carnage Tower and I go EOT inescapable blaze. Untap is inescapable blaze. That's 12 damage. You're basically dead. Mm -hmm. I don't hate this card. This card seems I always want cards like this to do something because <laughs> it's any... Well, there's... There's a couple things on cards like this. One is that you want it to hit any target, not just creatures and not just players. And two is you want it to be an instant. And it, and it hits both of those boxes for me. It is expensive, but it also can't be countered. So, like, you can aim these at... Like, a Bane Fire for six is going to cost you seven mana. And it has to be sorcery, right? So, in a control deck, you technically could have a few of these in the deck just to, to finish them off with Lightning Strikes. Like a Just Guy control deck. I don't think it's out of the question. Domo. We have snap capture, so maybe you're right. I was actually thinking that. I was going to say you actually you could surveil right. for an extra six damage. I was joking, but There could be a blue-red control deck... That you're literally like, yeah. just and burning turn, them burn out. You. Yeah. Turn, burn you. It's uncounterable burn. Mm. You don't have that much life. Like, you have a deck full of disdainful strokes and negates and stuff, and this just kills you. Six damage is a lot. The fact that you get flash. I'm going to put it on the list good. because, yeah. Because the fact that you can... You don't need four, right? You don't need three. If you find that one and you've already hit lightning strikes, like, you're there. I'm also going to write down the cards that we saw playable in the YouTube description so you guys can check them out. So you guys can say it. Lava Coil. Two mana. Lava Coil deals four damage to target creature. If that creature will die, exile this turn. Yeah, this is actually great removal. Card's good. This is just roast except for uh, 
four damage instead of five. Roast could not hit flyers though, right? Yep, and it right. didn't exile. This is like um, there is another card just this like card's this card's great. That does that exiles and deals four damage. I can't remember what it's called now. Oh, why not the Mirari Conjecture deck? Mirari Conjecture doubles it, right? There you go. That's true too. Oh, I like that. Little primal amulet in a in a blue red. That deck. seems harder, but I uh, yeah, I like the idea. Like I I think just like six uncounterable damage at instant speed is pretty good, guys. Pretty again. Pretty. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready for it. Pretty, 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 pretty good. I'm not going to say it's great. Like, I'm not going to say it's going to be, like, uh, guaranteed playable. However, it seems fine. Great and good. Where's that? Right in the Probably, like, uh, about 40% high, I would say. 40%. This right here, though, is... This is just Goblin Rabble Master. This is just here. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, Legion Warboss is great. Three mana for a two two with Mentor instead of Haste. Or uh, Goblin Rabble Master had the ability of... Um, Plus X plus O, where X is the number of goblins you, you control that are attacking. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your step on your turn, create a one one red goblin creature with haste, and attacks if able. I like this that it's not creating a goblin token with haste. It creates a goblin that gains haste. So now you don't have to have the tokens that have haste on them, which is super weird. Now you can just have a regular one one goblin and just have the creature give it haste, which is great. Also, they it's, survive combat. If they survive combat on the turn that they're made, they don't have to attack the rest. What do you mean they don't have to attack the rest? Because with Goblin, it says... Oh, the oh, next go- turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see what you're saying. Right, right, right. Goblin, Rabble, Master, and if goblins. you had two Rabble Masters, they both had to Everything attack. Had to because, attack. Yes. yeah. And then the Mentor is just great because obviously it gives your guys... It makes it a 2-2. Yeah. Yeah, that, that card's good too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually wrote Roast here. Hold on. <laughs> it's not what it's called. Lava, Lava coil. coil. All right. And then Goblin... Is it Banneret? No, that was the crappy one drop. I don't remember what it was called. War Boss. Legion, Legion War Boss. Boss. Of course, that's a red staple for Maniacal staple. Rage. Two mana and creatures plus two, plus two, and can't block. Nope, don't care. Yeah, it's just not going to do it. Not good enough. Maximize Velocity. One mana. Target creature gets plus one, plus one against haste until end of turn. This is just the red one mana of the one, one flight. Uh, yeah, it's just not great. I mean, if it gained, if it gained Trample, maybe. Haste is just not good enough. Ornery Goblin, two mana for a two one. When it blocks or becomes blocked, it deals one damage to that creature. This is just this is just worse than the um, than the werewolf that was uh, Kessig Forge Master. Is that what it was called? I don't remember. I'll just look up Kessig. There's probably going to be less than ten Kessigs. I would imagine eight. Uh, Kessig Forge Master. Yeah, it's a two one. Whenever it becomes blocked or blocks, it deals one damage to that creature at the beginning, and then you flip it and it deals two damage when it flips. It's literally so. the same card without. It's the, the same card without the back faff. Yeah. Back faff. Back faff. Mm. Risk factor, three mana. Target opponent may have risk factor deal four damage to them. If that player doesn't, you draw. This is also going into the inescapable blaze deck, I yes, think. Yes, yeah. Like, Holy you're just cow. dealing a lot of damage. And it's got jumpstart. So, like, even the it's, first time, right. they're like, yeah. So, you either draw three, you either draw three and they take four. You draw three and they, or you draw six or they take eight. Uh, and that's only, if they take eight, that's only two inescapable blazes, buddy. I'm going to write that down. Okay, honest question. Is this a card that you could see as a singleton in a modern burn deck? In a modern burn deck? Mm-hmm. I don't see Three why is not. a high mana cost. Well, yeah, because but it jump gives you... relevant. Yeah, it gives you things to do with your excess lands. And it's not doing I wouldn't even play this as a four. two-up, right? There's no, there's, no good, there's no good out for this, right? Either they take four, which is huge in modern. Or they're giving you or six they're giving damage you in spells. Three to at least, yeah. yeah, probably you're going to draw a two-to-one split for your spells. I, I totally get that. And it's an instant. Like, that's super relevant. I like this card a lot, actually. Yeah, I think it this does, it seems, I wrote it down already, so. Yeah, it seems pretty balanced. Rubble Belt Boar. Four mana for a 3 3. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 oh until end of turn. This is just the. This is literally the um, Goblin War Drum, the Drum Beater. Goblin. Goblin Drum Beater. Except it's a 3 3 instead of 2 2. Oh, it's, it's when it enters the battlefield, it's not per turn. No. Nah, this is worse. This is. This is I mean, you'll play it in limited. It's a 3 3 for 4. They always but... print something like this in the sets where it comes in and buffs your dude. Runaway Steamkin. This card's Runaway great. Steamkin never coming back. Two mana for a 1-1. One, one. All right, well, whenever you cast a red spell, if it has fewer than three 1-1 one, one counters on it, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Remove three, add... Uh... This card's great. This is a turn one combo in standard or in modern. A turn one combo? Is it turn one or turn two? How do you get it out on turn one? Uh, semi Spirit Guide. And then you use it with the 4-4, four, four, zero mana 4-4. Four, four. That makes a 4-4 four, four token. Oh, packed? Yep. Use multiple hacks, then you remove the counters from it, and then you can cast... How many cards? So you have to have uh, like the exact seven cards in your hand? 
Packed, 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 Steamkin, Just Mountain, and Simeon Spirit Guide. It's, it's a thing. What? Okay, this is six cards. What is your seventh card? Uh, It could be like an Ornithopter and then uh, take off one of the packs maybe, and you make the three red goblins by sacking your Ornithopter. How do you pay for the packs next turn? You don't. You kill them in one turn. You one-shot them. How do they... What do you one-shot Because you're with? you're pump you're pumping everything with the 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 one one that whenever you cast it for two, it gives all your dudes haste and plus one plus zero. Goblin bushwhacker. Bushwhacker. Okay, so your hand is steam kit. <laughs> Why are we making this a big thing? I'm so just saying it's, it's possible. That's all right, it. I'm gonna write it down. Yeah. No, no, no! Don't write it down. I don't think it's playable. Well, you don't think it's playable? No, I don't know. I, if it's I think that could be player. That that could be playable. It's right two mana one one, which is I'm really reluctant to. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think that's good. It's real rough. Like, it takes a lot rough. of work. Smelt Ward Minotaur. Three mana for a 2-3. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn. This is great and limited. I was reading a comment about oh, what yeah, you were talking right. about. Sorry. Because you did a confused face, and I was like, this is good and limited, right? That's What's actually that's actually really good and limited, I think. Yeah, it's a two-day. Uh, every turn, every almost, turn, you can make something yeah, not block. Yeah, you kill one guy, and you make the other guy unable to block. You, you like, make favorable this combat. Great. Yeah, every turn. Or, you know, whatever you have a removal, an instant or sorcery, like, which is pretty consistent. Street Riot. Uh, f- five mana for as long as it's your turn, creatures you control get plus one. That's plus. so bad. It's great and limited. In red? Yeah, plusing your whole team and giving them trample? That's aggressive, dude. Trample is huge and limited, especially if they have a bunch of 1 1 tokens. Yeah, this card's good and limited. Because it's your top end. You actually play a guy, play a guy, play a guy, play a guy. Play this on five, and then all your guys that attack are just Still great. powered less than the 3-4, three, 3-5 three, Sphinxes that they casted? How many are they going to have out by turn five? I'm just saying. They only need one or two. Well, they're not going to have two maybe by turn have, five. Maybe they have zero three walls. Great. Then they're all dead because my guys have Mentor and plus one, plus one, <laughs> Trample. they all have Mentor. They're all just mentoring each other. Sure, Strike. Never plus three, plus... Yeah, I don't even know what that, this... That art's gas, though. It is, That's because that, that human being is being electrolyzed. There's, or electrocuted, rather. There's so much going on in I that. I literally replaced the real, 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 world word, real world word of electrocute with the magic term electrolyzed, because that's just how my brain works now. Woo-hoo. Hey, careful, buddy. Don't get electrolyzed. Uh, electrocuted, rather. That's, that's how that word works. Hmm. Anyway, don't care. Touch courier. Torch courier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> touch courier? What is this guy doing? Here to bring the touch. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here. Is uh, anything anything I'm I can help with? I'm carrying the touch for you. Anything I can help with around here, fellas? Another one, one, <laughs> another one mana one one. I don't understand the uh, the 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 prom the uh, the prevalence of all these one mana one ones. I guess it's a mentor thing. I don't know. Sacrifice torch courier it is a mentor thing. Obviously, another target creature gains haste. Until, yeah, I don't know. No, that's not good. That's not good enough. It's a raging goblin with an with an upside. Wo Woyek? Is it Woyek or Wojek? Do we I would know? say Woyek. Woyeki. That's not it. Yeah, Runaway Steam can triggers off all red spells. Not just in, yeah, sure. Actually, that's pretty good. The fact that it's that it does trigger off creatures too. Oh, I thought it was just uh, non-creature spells. No, it's it's all. Oh, then then I think it's definitely worth it. Worth an inclusion because basically the turn it's attacking, it's probably One, two, already a three, three, four, five. Uh, Runaway, you cast a red spell. Yeah, any red spell. Oh, but it it, it top ends at four four, which obviously that's still really right. Good, but, but then you add three, you play two more, and then you just get two more counters sure. back. It's, it, it allows you to top ending at four is pretty good. Yeah, I'll, that's I'll actually not it. bad. What is it called? Steam Steamkin. S T A M K I K N. Uh, Steam dash K E N Ken. No. Okay, it's Ken. You got it. K I N. Oh, it was dash. There was a dash. Yeah. Otherwise, I didn't think you were lying about that. All right, three mana mentor. When it attacks, it can't attack or block alone. Wow, this guy's lonely. This is a... Well, I wouldn't say it's a worse... What's the goblin? There's a goblin. A 3-3 three, three for 2 that can't attack or block by itself. It's a famous oh, card. That's that's like a 6-6, six, six, right? No, you're thinking of Mog... Uh, Mog... Mog... No, not Mog. It's not Mog. No, it's not. No. It's a 2-2 two, two for... It's a 2-2. Two, two, it's a 2-mana two, 3-3. Two yeah. That can't attack, can't attack or block alone. Block. Yeah, sure. Whatever. But this is Mentor. And he's a 3-butt. So that's actually kind of so relevant. So is the other one. I don't know. This card's fine. I just don't like having those. Flunkies. That's yeah, it. this card's fine. Mog Flunkies. And that's the end. Wow. All right. So Red also had six that I liked or that we all liked. Uh, Goblin Crater, Crater Maker, Inescapable Blaze, Lava Coil, Legion, War Boss, Risk Factor, and Runaway Steamkin. Uh, all those cards should see play in some capacity. I am I think Inescapable Blaze is probably more of a pet card for me than, uh, than yeah. legitimate. But, I mean, I think I made a good argument for it. 
So no, I think you really did actually. I never looked into the set and saw what we just talked about, like a Jeskai is like a aggro control kind of. It's not aggro control. How how would we describe that deck? Like modern Jeskai right now, where you're playing basically you're playing a control deck that wins by burning someone out. Yeah, chip shotting away with a small creature or burning burning. Or just like lightning strikes too, or yeah. just just burn spells and like it just you, turns the corner. Yeah, and you don't have to actually play like creatures like uh, Lyra. Like you could just be like, what are you at twelve? Okay. okay. Also, there's there's. Shocklands in the format now too. Don't forget, so people could right. actually take yeah. damage on their own. Yeah, you're not lying. That's so, true. That's I extremely mean, relevant. It's a thing. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this portion of the video. We're not going away. We're just going to end the uh, the white, blue, black, and red. But if you guys are watching on YouTube, feel free to check me out on Patreon and Twitch. Links are in the description below. I've also left the uh, the names of all the cards that we liked, that we thought were constructed playable, in the description as well, so you can check that out. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for the support.